can. You let me know that when you can be able to see me. And yeah, hopefully that'll be us up and running. I think everything's ready. Got my sensitivity Is settings on. Yeah, advert. Yes. M and M dollars. Then I, I looked at one of my videos from a while back. Mm. It was like 0.4 pence. <laughs> like oh, you're live. Oh, hello. Right. Hi. Hello, everyone. Um, right. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Flustered. I was mid chat. Let's start again. <laughs> right. Hello, um, and welcome to the Arcane Forge. Thank you so much for waiting. Those of you who have been waiting, thank you to those of you who are just turning up. Um, it's lovely to see you all. These are really, really wonderful uh, experiences for me. They sort of invigorate me throughout the rest of the whole week because I love getting to chat to you guys and create something really, truly weird with you. Um, for those who are new to the Arcane Forge, um, hi, and who are new to our live streams, uh, welcome. Please feel free to add your input. Um, as per usual, I'm going to sort of outline what we're going to be doing today and ask for some ideas for you guys to be sort of ruminating on. Um, because there's a bit of a delay and then I will uh, sort of thank my patrons uh, as I do every live stream uh, as well so that we can kind of be getting your ideas gestating and flowing uh, by the time that you know it's like a 30 second or a minute long delay or something like that um, and today we'll be creating a fey creature together something from the fey wild there's a lot of talk from people who wanted to see me do something not disgusting and not weird and not well maybe not weird but um, something beautiful um, which, you know what, I've not done really in a long time. I like to do beautiful things, but I get quite carried away with my horrible flesh monstrosities, as you know. So it'll be nice to create something that's quite pleasant to the eye. Um, uh, joining me here is my wife, Yvonne, who will be reading out your questions and stuff. So I can't actually see your responses right away, but she's going to be sort of uh, reading your responses and, and asking questions and stuff uh, that, you know, she is your conduit. Uh, that so I can I can hear what's going on. Um, metal is in the background, so if you hear any like snorting and uh, goblinoid noises and stuff like that, that is just my little Frenchy Myrtle. Um, and yeah, otherwise, what I was thinking about for this one, you can see that this is a blank slate rather than having like uh, various bits and bobs. A fey creature, fey is quite broad as a term. Um, because we have everything from like little quicklings and darklings and all that kind of stuff, uh, like tiny humanoid creatures to um, uh, blink dogs and um, oh god, what are they called? The the cats with the tentacles um, who displace the beasts, um, and also like hags and red caps and stuff like that. So there's a huge amount of variety in what constitutes a fey creature. But for those who want some sort of uh, vague description to go on, the Feywilds are essentially a mirror version of our world um, where all the weird and wild and unsympathetic chaoticness of nature uh, runs rampant. Um, and it's sort of... Um, it's a dreamland at the same time. Things that exist in the Feywild come about because people in the material plane dream about them and tell stories about them. And essentially, um, the Feywild is basically a fairy tale made manifest. And those fairy tales range from anything from, you know, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves all the way up to, you know, Pan's Labyrinth. So there's all sorts of like horrible and amazing and beautiful and twisted and creepy creatures. They have this kind of like um, the macabre beauty of it's like creatures living in the Mariana Trench. There's this kind of like it's hideous but also beautiful and um, you know thoughts become manifest so the idea that like um, if you were you know the the age-old thing is if you were to meet an archfey or something like that um, and uh, they offered their services in exchange for whatever rewards you felt suitable to them and you had no money whatsoever and you said all I can offer you is my gratitude then they would smile with a twisted Machiavellian grin, accept your gratitude, and then when you left the Feywild, you would never be able to say thank you again, because they had taken tangibly your ability to be grateful. 
um, that kind of thing. So it's always like, you know, fairy tale esque, like weird, chaotic rules, hard to understand, and the unsympathetic me. The unsympatheticness of nature. So we're going to create a creature that would live in that environment. Um, and there's so there's so many things that we could draw upon. Um, and I want your ideas of where we can start, what kind of powers this creature could have, what kind of role it would take place in. And to start off with, I would really like to hear your ideas for sort of what kind of frame of a creature are we making? Are we making a humanoid thing? Are we making an animalistic thing? Are we make you know, is this, you know, what kind of role is this going to take place in that kind of thing? So if you think of some suggestions and things like that, um, I'm going to wait for your ideas and what you kind of like to see. They're already coming in. Are they already coming in? Right, okay, I'll be very quick. Then. I'll, be, I'll be very quick. <laughs> right, no worries. Um, in which case, I'll try and make this brief but still respectful to my patrons who have been kind enough to support me this month. Um, some of you are in the comments, so thank you very much for being here. Um, those of you uh, who are, I mean, this this goes out to all my patrons, really, uh, because without you, I wouldn't be able to make the content that I make here. Um, I wouldn't be able to do these streams and so on. So thank you so much for all of your support. This is a really, truly, unbelievably wonderful community, especially those of you uh, who have managed to find the Patreon um, and, uh, and help me pay the bills and feed Myrtle and uh, and all that good stuff. So um, this month you are Nicholas G. Silver, Raptor Dio, Jelly Pig, Duck Quack, Brandon Wilkinson, Jonathan Foster, Benjamin Colburn, Yorick Beast, Nap in Camo, um, um, Nicholas Bayer, uh, Ethan Dibby, Sky Rush Soul, Nathan Stratton, Amanda and Jake Westfall. Um, Bartle Gruff the Great. You're new. What a fantastic name. Bartle Gruff the Great. Um, uh, Braxton Hudson. Uh, healthy Eye Wolf. Health Eye Wolf, maybe? If you're in the comments, let me know how to pronounce your name so I don't mess it up next time. Uh, Peter Balf. Max Schluter. Um, Ryan H. Steve Harrison, Tim Klima, Dan Waterman, Styrax, Colby Monroe, It's Just Abby, uh, Sam Hickson, Brandon Kerr, Darth Katana, Trevor Traub, Tamaling, Oliver Thorvald Mellock, AJ, Dominique Jolly, Max Copeland, Aldrin, Christian Palmer Smith, Matthew Anderson, Nicholas Brown, uh, Ryan von Aegir, Aegir, Aegir? Aegir? Again, let me know how to pronounce your name. I think I've mispronounced that a few times uh, in these. Um, Ragnar Bearson, uh, Matt Lichenwalner, um, Jacob Riesler, uh, Jared Moore, um, Damien, uh, Rose Selavy, Daniel Williams, Bronwyn Haller, Megan Myrick, George Punton, Inquisitor Thomas, Doombot9, Dean Root, Denny Scalf, Bootsy, Rappletech, Janessa, Grant Train, Luke Kamak, Rory Gladstone, and a new one whose name is very hard. Uh, it's Yuda, Yuda Jorge, I think that is, or Yuda George, Yuda, or Yuda Jorge, I think. Um, but thank you so much for all of your support, everyone. I really appreciate it. Had call for Myrtle to be sure. Oh, oh hello Myrtle. Hi. Hi. Oh, oh, oh. Do you want to let me know if she's on? Uh, so this is Myrtle. This is the true artist behind the channel. <laughs> uh, if any of you saw my uh, April Fool's, this is uh, Myrtle okay. is she on screen. There's been so many comments, so I'm just going to quickly try and get okay. through them. Mm -hmm. I think Aldrin, as always, sees to the very core of what is going to happen in these live streams. Uh -huh. Oh, there she's on screen now. Yeah. Um, and has said, give it five minutes before it's a monstrosity. <laughs> no, this time, right, okay, this is the this is the specific caveat that we're going to take your suggestions, we're going to roll on things, we're going to come up with some ideas that are really cohesive and nice. Um, but fundamentally, we're going to be turning down, not something I usually do, but turning down any suggestions that would really make this thing absolutely atrocious. Yeah. It can be beautiful with a hint of creepy, or it can be kind of like some some kind of mimic creature that perhaps um, oofed uh, is uh, you know has this kind of like creepiness underneath. But uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway. So uh, we have some new people uh, commenting Ooh. as well. Um, Welcome, guys. We shout out to the new folk. Um, I've noticed that the comments go so fast sometimes. And <laughs> um, we've got Faith, who says the Faith Center. Excellent. Um, and Nicolay. 
Let's see. I, oh, right. Uh, right, where are we going? Where are we going with this? Um, Someone has seen, um, yeah, Aldrin was saying that you were going to redraw the blink. Dog or I'm tempted to read Roar yeah, Dog, but a suggestion um, for that. Okay. Um, uh, Nicole says, um, "How about a fey blue iguana? That's pretty cool. Oh, that's pretty cool. Um, um, their blue scales combined with the fact that they get color uh, during the mor- during the morning makes them fit fitting." Someone's saying, uh, "Ace is saying more humanoid." Okay. <laughs> Ben says Myrtle is the ultimate life form. Yes. I don't even think Myrtle thinks that. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, insectoid might be quite cool. So stock quack. Um, Myrtle's secretly, secretly a blink dog. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yes. Although um, she doesn't blink. That's the weird thing, right? Oh, but if, she uh, stare you right out. She doesn't... She, she'll stay right out, but also, like, if you ever play a game like Peekaboo or something like that, I don't, I don't know. I don't know why this comes up so often, right? But I will find if I put my hands over Myrtle's eyes for any reason, I will. There will be two little wet patches on my hand because she will not blink during yeah. that time, um, and that is so creepy. Um, it's just a power move, honestly. Um, yeah. Okay, so um, uh, Catman's saying uh, small humanoid fae or mm-hmm. more otherworldly. Yeah. Otherworldly even. Um, avian something avian. Oh, avian's interesting. Oh, oh, hang on, I just jumped massively there. Oh, let's go back, let's go back. <laughs> um, right. Uh, right. Uh, healthy wolf is how you say that. Healthy, healthy wolf. Howl, howl. Yeah, like, like, like Alfie wolf, but healthy wolf, is that? No, 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 like no. three words. Oh. Howl, like the noise, oh. howl. Right. Fee. Oh, wolf. okay, right. Healthy. How fey wolf. Thank you for clearing that up. <laughs> Cheers for that. I'll make sure to do that in future. Uh, human uh, slash plant. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can do that. that could be. Um, oh, right. Um, something ape like. Something like a silky, which is quite cool. Ooh, yeah, in Scotland, yeah. we could use a bit of that. Yeah. Um, something with two faces on one head, says Apocalypse and Moth. Ooh, interesting. Um, uh, Yorick says, perhaps something like the Green Knight from the Arthurian. Oh, you legend. know I want to draw a knight. You know I do. Um, I'll, I'll put it down. That feels very self-indulgent, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. Maybe like an, oh, an insectoid knight. Uh, right, we'll, we'll, it's going in. Um, right. Uh, Scottish accent is strong. Yeah, sorry guys. I hope you're understanding me okay. Um, right. Yeah, a couple of calls for the Green Knight. Um, blue iguanas, we've got that down now. Um, okay, so I'm. Coop says I've got very little notion of what's happening, but may I suggest making them in some way a manifestation of certain feeling or emotional experience? Ooh, okay, That's okay. Cool. I think I think right. Okay, hold on. Um, and in a huldra, I don't know if you know that one. An huldra animal folk, yeah. With a tail um, and some unique wood pattern. Yeah. Um, uh, York says perhaps it could be hammerhead. Um, a hammerhead from the Wizard of Oz book. They look like old, armless men who have extendable necks, so they headbutt people really hard. <laughs> that sounds <laughs> amazing. It sounds beautiful, but yeah, it sounds yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah, it sounds amazing. Like, if we don't like, put them in our next game, I'm going to be really Yeah, they're going in a Monster Monday for sure. Maybe not easily beautiful, but I have an idea. Okay, uh, let me just have a look at uh, older folk, because I remember... Oh, Green Knight in combination with a plan. Yes. That could be really cool. Yeah, so here's, here's my thinking. Um, I quite want to combine Green Knight, Humanoid, um, Emotional Manifestation, and this sort of like plant slash insectoid thing to make maybe like a kind of like um, Moth Knight type thing would be quite cool. Um, maybe something like that. Um, maybe the mm-hmm. two two faces comes into that in some way. Maybe the, like the wings have a face type mm-hmm. thing um uh, people my deeper says a dragon that spent too much time in the fey world and it's changed dramatically that's quite cool that's very very cool um i uh, I, I mean if it was something huge it could be if it's lay still enough in the fey worlds for long enough it could have been sort of overgrown and taken over by lots of little creatures 
that might be a bit hard to do. It'll Maybe, yeah, we've only got a couple of hour. hours here, but also, <laughs> like, I went this Dragon December, among the suggestions that I'm going to have for my patrons include, um, there's a fantastic uh, creature called an Oleander Dragon, um, that is a dragon basically uh, constructed out of, like, fey plants and stuff. Um, so that might be something. It's, it's one of my favourite mon monsters to use, um, I'm going to put it in my suggestions for Dragon December uh, and see if my patrons take it. I know already, like already on the list before they even vote on it, I'm definitely going to put in um, Io or Asgarath, uh, the the dragon god that I've not covered yet. Um, but I'm thinking maybe sort of like Feyish dragon comes in in Dragon December. Um, so. What do you think? Um, I'm liking this emotional manifestation idea in particular. Yeah. Um, um, just a couple of other suggestions. Mm -hmm. um, sort of Alice in Wonderland slash Wizard of Oz style of fantasy. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Um, insect fae are a favourite of mine and kind of an insecty knight sounds amazing. Mm -hmm, definitely. I like uh, this. A knight who can shape shift all the animals listed. Oh right, okay. Fae yeah. beholder. Oh, we did. I did see earlier on there was a, a call for a beholder crossed oh. with a bee, so it would be a beholder. Oh, that's pretty cute. <laughs> oh, a um, bee knight. Dark fae. Um, perhaps the moth knight could be a manifestation of overwhelming expectations. <laughs> oh my god, that's just a bit too on yeah. the nose. Yeah, goodness <laughs> I me. I like it. Okay. <laughs> so, so that the wings have patterns that look like disapproving faces. Drag, that's kind of That's amazing. pretty cool. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Disapproving um, faces. Dragon yeah. with plant parts and deer antlers. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's the bee slash beholder. Yeah. Oh. Insect. Uh, plus night plus plant plus fae just to make it easy thanks yeah. um green night is by far the most accepted yeah so yeah. i feel like some sort of thing so are we okay okay so boiling it down do you want a bee night or a kind of moth night and also have a think about where where this creature kind of stands in the kind of fey order of things it's kind of hard to have um uh you know any kind of hierarchy in the Fey because it is a it is like a n the chaos of nature as it were, um, but there are still courts um, and there are still arch Fey mm. and things like that. I feel like this creature seems like the kind of um, what a pit fiend might okay, be. To, moth to, knight, to, yeah, moth knight. Moth knight is winning. Okay. Um, also, uh, apocalyptic mosses maybe something with rainbows for pride. Which is a nice oh yeah right okay um, oh rainbow blade for... oh, yeah, sorry I got yeah right hold on I'm writing that down um, <laughs> there's a couple of calls for Myrtle as a big blink dog I'm sorry I'll um, sketch over there you don't, you don't want a teleporting Myrtle though just get you teleport your smell elsewhere right now because it's really gassing us out okay it's like moth night moth okay, night okay mo moth night, night. We're, we're on the moth brothers night, okay. want moths <laughs> <laughs> okay okay that's cool um Right, am I making a... I don't want to fight bees, we can't afford to lose any more too. Good call, good call. Um, yeah, let's do... Let's do Background a, idea from uh, Peeper My Jeeper. Mm -hmm. um, they come from a, a winter Illidrin town. Ooh, Illidrin okay. town yeah. uh, that's so obsessed with its own misery that they built around... They built around marsh of possibility. Mm -hmm. Every time you look into a puddle, you see what could have been. Oh my god, that's that yeah, sounds nice. pretty damn cool. Uh, I'm liking the sound of that a lot. Um, it would be just... gorgeous, but a little bit sad. Autumn court. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, you know, moths do have that kind of like a uh, death element to them. That kind of uh, the fragility of them. Um, Oh, hang on, let's just go. Just throw another one at you. I know you yeah. always get overwhelmed with Sorry, don't worry. so many I'm, suggestions, I've got, I've but got, they're all cool Nicolay suggestions. says, a knight with a K yeah. of night with an N, just an N, uh, who can take the heat, who can't take the heat of day, so it envelops itself in frost to keep itself cool. Oh, damn it, that's so, so that's cool. cool. All right, I'm, I'm going to write a down. With a rainbow sword. Yeah, uh, rainbow sword is 100% going Giant in. dragon headed caterpillar as a mount. And yes, there are natural species of caterpillar. Uh, uh, moth knight could also be a manifestation of self destruction, going off the notion that moths seek fabric. 
they could eat their own armor, making themselves vulnerable. Wow, that's cool. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I was thinking of doing some oh, Carnotaurus plus stag creature as a kind of dinosaur fey creature. Sounds cool. You rarely see dinosaurs in the fey. I like the sound of that, actually. That's some very untapped creativity that I like the sound of. Okay, important questions from Aldrin. Again, mm. just cutting through all the bill. Yeah. What is the knight going to ride? Importantly, guys. Okay. Oh, right. By the way, I also want to uh, like circle back to the the dragon caterpillar thing. I don't know if it was Yorick who mentioned that earlier on or not, but dra- uh, he he mentioned that to me. Um, and I don't know if any of you guys have seen Dragon Prince. If you've not seen Dragon Prince, I highly recommend it. First couple of episodes are a bit sketchy, but it gets really really good. It's made by the people who made Avatar: The Last Airbender, uh, and therefore is amazing. Oh my god. Um. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but what Yorick was saying is a giant dragon-headed caterpillar. Yes, that's... Which, yeah. Have you seen one of those yes, creatures? that's literally what I'm kind of talking ah, about right now. okay, because that's three yeah, up your street. They are one of the coolest creatures I've ever seen, um, and yeah, they're just... yeah. Um, oh, hang on, wait, wait. What? Just wondering if your wife is still unable to pronounce... I think I can rem- remember this. Micro... Fe- fa- oh, I thought I had okay. it there. Micro... Cephalosaurus? That sounds right to me. I can't <laughs> see it, but... Uh, That's not right. But no, I still can't see it. I gave it a shot. Um, yeah, right in a dinosaur. Uh, what if the rainbow sword is made from the wing of a slain foe of another one of its kinds? That's right. Oh, you, you're speaking to me now. Uh, okay, this is this is good. Um, wing rainbow blade. Okay, right. This is good. This is gonna be good. This is right on my street. See, we're a little bit out of sync with you guys, and so Aldrin just says no, which might be my pronunciation or it could be <laughs> a reference to something else. Uh, wait, pronounce that. Mm, I gave it a shot. <laughs> right. Am I doing a female coded or a male coded knight here? What do you think? You can have the say on this one. Oh, let's let's do a female. Yeah. Right. Okay. Sounds good. Man-faced caterpillar mouth for a moth night. Man-faced caterpillar. Is that? That sounds terrifying. Oh my god. get a sort of general shape of this person on the go. Are we going with an unseely sort of thing with Queen Mab? I'm not sure where this person will fit into the Fey Courts, um, whether they're seely or unseely. And I, so the, the, the seely and unseely are law that I don't tend to really use uh, in my own homebrew world, so I've not spent much time researching them. I, th- As I understand it, seely is kind of like loosely good guys, and then unseely is kind of loosely bad guys. Um, if that's the case, that's kind of not how I really picture the Fey Wilds, but feel free to let me know in the comments. I would love to hear what the kind of idea is behind that arm. Um, so carman has got good suggestions for mm. your um, the clothing, which oh, you're excellent. always excellent. very keen on. Yes, 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 um, yes. Can imagine fur about their shoulders quite dramatically, uh, with wings fluttering like a cloak. Ooh, yeah, very cool. Go. And then um, use silk clothes as well, because you know, of you're course. A yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Um, yeah, this is going to be this is going to be. Oh, extravagant. and dust. She needs this. Um, she had dust from herself. Maybe yeah, that's some ability. Yes. Yes. Myrtle snores are magical. I don't even know this Myrtle snoring anymore. <laughs> this is quiet. That's, yeah, that's a quiet snore. This is quiet as our um, house gets. Moth night riding some moth for a <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. Right. Let's make this lady beautiful. Um, okay. Now, I like the idea of Almost making her look like she's kind of dancing. Um, so apart from your terrifying, terrifying monsters that you enjoy drawing, I reckon like 
probably the Fae are your next sort of favourite thing. Like yeah, totally. Elven. I love the Fae. I love elves. I love kind of making beautiful creatures. I tend to get carried away with like, oh, it's beautiful, but also it's terrible. Um, so, <laughs> um, but I do, yeah, I have a huge fascination with elves um, and all things Sylvan because it's kind of... Um, yeah, like ornateness, I think, is something that I'm really fascinated with. Um, it goes to that kind of like craftsmanship uh, type deal. And I really love um, like arcanthus leaf patterns and things. So they're just like a lot of over the top extravagance is something that I'm really a huge fan of. Um, Pagerius is asking if uh, Myrtle is a reference to some sort of fantasy thing. We're, not that I'm aware of. I think we just picked an old granny name because. Um, the breeder had told us that of the litter of nine of them that she was the most ladylike uh -huh. and she was this genteel little soul and amongst all these heathen <laughs> brothers and sisters that she had and then we got her home and she was completely wild ourselves. Yeah. But she was named Myrtle before we had her, so yeah. her what was her baby uh, blossom uh, was Yeah her, uh, Melomocha Magic. Melomocha Magic was her um breeder's name that she was given. Yeah. <laughs> she's neither mellow nor particularly magic. Uh, I mean she's, she's somehow magic. Yeah. Uh yeah. Um okay, mm -hmm. Nicolay says, uh, a shapeless mount who shapeshifts shapeshifts only into the most beautiful, perfect Majestic, vibrant, and vital versions of all of the animals and creatures listed. Excellent. Excellent. Just to make things really difficult, of course. Um, okay. Um, it's just a, more of the mood. I imagine um, more of the mood is how I imagine it unseasonably or colder mm. in emotion and. Uh, strict and such, whether well, sealy or energetic, though. Oh, okay. Um, Is that um, the distinction? Reactive. Right, okay. So neither say it's good or bad. Okay, well, there you go. Interesting. I like this. I've always interpreted sealy versus unsealy as lawful versus chaotic, so more than more than good versus evil. Yeah, Catman. that seems very fair. Uh, Patrick Walsh, Walsh has just joined us and is asking okay. what we're designing. Do you want to just... So yeah, we are designing a fey creature, and I've taken some suggestions from everybody, um, and everyone would like to see a, uh, a sort of fey knight. It seemed very popular. Um, and they are going to be kind of like moth, inspired uh, is going to be the whole idea with a kind of a rainbow uh, silken wing blade uh, which I'm very excited about but as it is right now I'm just kind of uh, coming up with a loose uh, silhouette for this person to start off with um, and then I'm going to start designing some clothes and things and we can start talking about like what can this character actually do because um, I kind of picture them as um, in the neighborhood power level, uh, I mean, you guys can obviously tell me, um, but I imagine they're kind of in the neighborhood of a, a power level of like a uh, pit fiend type character, kind of like filling that role like a, the servant of some archfey, uh, maybe like the kind of Prince Nuala style Hellboy esque uh, character. Um, I'm making this person uh, very intentionally stick thin, by the way. I'm trying to go for insectoid stuff if people are. Uh, concerned about how uh, gaunt this woman <laughs> looks uh, I can put some more meat on, on her bones if people get very concerned but so far it's just kind of going for uh, a very uh, insectoid is yeah. where I'm going for uh, let's see if I can actually a bit Steve Harrison is asking has anyone played a game Cultist Simulator Cultist Simulator oh someone was recommending that to me the other day actually was it Steve on Steam, yeah. No, I said, was it Steve? Oh, it, it, no? it might have been Steve. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But it's... it's uh, maybe it was Joe, actually. Mm. I've been playing it a while back. It's got really beautiful artwork, um, as far as I'm aware. And it's kind of more of an art-based game than a... Than, yeah. Uh, Connor says, Personally, I thought of the fee like depiction of the kits in... Uh, mm. Some semi-benevolent tricksters and others are flat-out malicious. 
whatever the mood strikes them. Yeah, that's very fair. Um, right. So. Uh, uh, just because there's a big lot of stuff about moths in there, it's all about restlessness and compulsion. Oh, the, the game. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. Oh. Um, forgive me. I'm just pulling up some moth reference photos so that I can get some ideas of how I want her armour to kind of look. And earlier on someone said to look for Brett's kit about the antennae as well. So oh, like, yeah. it could be like a kind of hat or a fascinator or something. Excellent. I like the sound of this. Um, okay. I'm thinking do we want her to have a sort of like full helmet or do we want her to have a kind of uh, like her face being exposed type thing? What do you What do you think? How, because uh, I, I, I picture her being quite like uh, orchid mantis, sort of uh, quite covered in um, pieces of armor. But I want to hear your thoughts as well. Oh. The lunar moth looks awesome. Oh, yeah. Patrick's saying, full helmet, straight in there. With full helmet, straight away. Here is full helmet, keep her my jeeper. Okay, let's do it. Let's go for it. Um, oh, I've got some good ideas. Okay, okay, right, okay. Try not to get too carried away. Um, oh, one vote for exposed face, and the rest are saying full helmet. That's cool, don't you um, worry. Full mantis helm. Full mantis helm. Okay, right, okay. Big gonna... moth eyes, though. Big moth eyes. Okay, right. So I might stick some sort of like human looking armor sketch work on and then adapt it to become moth like i think that's what i'm going to do uh yes okay okay so um let's go for um steve says i would imagine there is having a bare head possibly even bald or short haired with long curling furry antennae Ooh. um maybe the helm coming off her face like a flower facing behind her oh that's a nice oh, idea oh yeah yeah uh, what kind of moth is it? aesthetic? Like lunar moth, black witch moth, which is super pretty, by the way. Mm, yeah, black witch moth. I'm gonna look at that. Definitely, I'm I'm putting the fluff around her because I definitely think a lot of the moth fluff uh, around the top here seems like a good call, and then like big ass wings are what we're going for. So, uh, have you ever seen? I don't know what it's called I feel like it's probably got Gigantus or something in the name but like the biggest moth yeah you mean the the super super fluffy one or the like yeah but it's like it's it's like a pet oh my god yeah no, I've seen cute. those yeah they are they're a little bit unsettling but they're also very cute um right okay hang on here so I'm wanting I want some chunk in this armour <laughs> armour made out of darkness and snow sorry I couldn't resist <laughs> <laughs> You just want to make my life difficult, don't you? That's, um, no, it's okay, don't worry. We're going to do some really cool stuff with this. I'm very excited about this. Venezuelan so poodle moth. Oh, I from, think that might be what I'm from, thinking From of. apocalyptic moth. Oh, and you know he's got the goods. Uh, if he's apocalyptic moth of all Oh things. my god, that's so cute. Yeah, it looks like a Pokemon. That's the one I'm thinking of. That's oh, the one I'm thinking of. Right, right okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, well, no, I'm not talking about that. Like, the all biggest right. moth is like... Terrifying. It just like I think I'll just pass out. Okay, it right. Okay, you need to I need to make sure that I've got. Oh, Steve Carson says I've got a moon garden, which is moth friendly, jasmine and moonflowers mm -hmm. and whatnot. Stuff that blooms at night, pale blues, pale yellows, and stuff. I have never heard of that, and that's that's, that's an amazing cool. idea. Okay. Atlas moth. Yes, that's it. It's Atlas like moth. twenty-seven centimeters. Would you grab a picture of an atlas moth so I can find out what that looks like? So I can cry. Yes. Um, because right now I'm just going like full whatever that very cute rabbit moth thing was. Um, I'm liking the idea of maybe putting some little wings Right, I'm going to show you on someone holding it just so you can okay. get an understanding of how big this thing is. Jesus Christ. Isn't that Christ. just landed on you? No, no, I would burn my whole arm off. No, thank <laughs> you. I mean, um, moths are very beautiful, but like, no, not that. 
Oh my god. Um, okay. Right. Uh, right. Where am I? Oh, I see. So it's cool. The garden smells amazing on a summer night. Oh, oh I like that idea now. Um, da, da, da. Uh, Ace says I'm thinking greens, purples, and blues. And that's good because Josh is always thinking green, always purples, green. and blues. <laughs> yeah, that's my go to. <laughs> You're speaking my language. Um, okay. Uh, right, let's go. No, wait, is it Luna Moss? Is that the big one? Hang on. I'm gonna curl the toes up because nothing says Faye more than like curled toes for some reason. Um, okay, and then some big hip armour, because, you know, that looks cool. Moonring would like to know what is your favourite monster. My favourite monster in general? Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Um, you know, I never really thought about it. Um, I think in terms of things to use, um, I really like the False Hydra. Is very, very interesting. Is a very, very interesting creature to use. Um... I don't know. I'm gonna to have to have a think about it. It's a big question, um, but uh, yeah. I'll, uh, what's yours? I, I, it's a really hard one to answer. Uh, Catherine says currently the sketch is giving me series JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Stand vibe. I uh, see. I've never actually watched that, but I I know the meme is that everything is a JoJo reference. Um, uh, is the, is the idea. Um, I'm using Google Images so much this. <laughs> oh, this is the the live streams are a great learning opportunity. Um, oh yeah, I think you like the color palette from that. Yeah, actually, there's lots of good colors going on there. Excellent. Um, right, hang on. Oh, I think in a big big moth skull as a helmet. Oh, I like the sound of that. Actually, I will work that uh, in. York says, I definitely should have thought about this earlier, but perhaps could have an extra pair of arms. Hmm. Oh Good yeah, plan. that's quite a cool idea actually. We'll we'll see actually. I might I might be able to do that um, before the armor is finished through here. So I'm I'm cycling through. I have a massive Pinterest board, which is where I keep all my kind of reference images for things that I really want to like elements of, of historical and medieval stuff and insects mm. and animals. Um, and I've forgotten where I put a particular piece of armor that I was like, this would really work with this. Um, kind of creature it's like some cavalier armor obviously because a knight and i can't remember what the name of the piece of armor is so i can't google it um so i'm sifting through kevin says stands are super powerful supernatural songs that typically typically look like buff people voguing in skin tight <laughs> costumes which yes no, <laughs> buff people that. voguing oh my god uh, right okay you just made uh that a, a show that i have to watch so uh yeah well, dynamic posing in excellent fashion that's pretty jojo <laughs> oh god, so double light for four arms oh uh, yeah okay we'll definitely put four arms in then in that case which means that this thing is a spellcaster as well as being uh as well as having a big double-edged sword so um just <laughs> dms you're welcome players i'm sorry uh <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, ah, uh, here it is. That's what it is. Right, okay. What is the name of that thing? It's like, it's the little elbow pad things um, that, like, they're only really used for jousting. And I can't mm. remember what they're called. They're super impractical off of a horse, but they look so cool. Um, they're just, like, really massive, um, uh, like, pre-gauntlets, I guess. But they... Like they'll be, the fey isn't about being practical, is it? You know, it doesn't need to be. Magic is involved, so it can be whenever we want. Um, and we're gonna make this really over the top. And this is already starting to look quite a lot like a jester, um, <laughs> which is not my intention. But you know what? I'm not sad about it either. Um, right, we're going to do a nice big gauntlet. And I'll do my little patented arch thingy that I like to do. Okay, uh, Aldrin's asking what else will she have? A shield, a dagger? Interesting. Um, I've not thought about that. So far I was just thinking like a very cool butterfly blade. Um, but I'm all ears. What else should she have? What kind of powers is this character going to have? I want to hear your suggestions. 
so that we can make something really, really cool. So I'll be back in a minute. No worries, take your time. I will finish sort of sketching out a few bits here. I'm going to make sure that this rainbow blade comes across as something wing-like as well. Um, insect wings are always fun to draw. They're always hard to draw, but they're always fun to draw. Um, and I completely neglected to draw her chest armor, which um, is going to say a lot about her character, really. So I'm thinking a large chest plate that ties into the... Oh, you know what? I could do a kind of moss head here. It would be quite cool with the face guard on it. But then is that me just basically doing eye boobs? That's not really great, is it? Um, we don't want that, I don't think. Unless it would look really cool. It's probably not gonna look really cool. It's probably gonna look really sexist. So let's not do that. Um, let's do... Okay, actually, you know what? Yeah, let's do, let's do this. I'll try and... Uh, oh, I could do like little insect legs around here, holding everything on, and then have them turning into the pattern that goes down here. I'm liking this again, guys. Oh, uh, so um, Steve is saying uh, culters? For the cool, culters? For the... Oh, culters. Yeah, that might yeah? be the word. Um, I don't actually know, but I will take your word for it. Um, do a nice tab. You know how I like a tabard, um, and we can do. Yours says, if you ask me, Jojo is really about colourful male supermodels beating each other up, punching punching ghosts with superpowers, named after Western songs and bands. You could not have sold that any harder. That's yeah, I'm definitely. Rude. I'm in. I'm so in. Um, right. Maybe it has the Eldritch Knight ability, where it ca when it casts a spell, it can attack as a bonus action. Ooh, so see very there. much. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, let's do there's this thing a little shield that is attached to the pauldron to display oh, yeah. right over the breast maybe one of those yeah hold on. let me just say pounds uh dms you're welcome players i'm sorry it's basically hags uh, <laughs> yeah um uh. sleeping powder when it's flying i like that oh very That's good idea cool. yeah a uh, compelling sentient beer being to get closer, bane of all spellcasters. Ooh, yes. Uh, choking, uh, like a uh, compelled jewel kind of thing. Choking, blinding, or venomous dust of some kind. Uh, lean into the myths about moth dust. Mm -hmm. um, I need to know more, know more about the myths about moth dust because I don't know any of that. Uh, allure ability where she creates a light and players. Oh, jump, jump, where did he go? Uh, uh, Ethan says, allure ability where she creates a light and players have to save or be compelled towards it. I like that. Yeah, definitely going in. What was the name of that really cute moth? The little tiny fluffy Pokemon moth? Um, uh, to be fair, I know. Is, have you still got it in a tab? If you've not got it in a tab still, then don't worry about it. But, it's uh, two seconds. <laughs> Venezuelan poodle moth. Poodle moth. Sounds like something like Monty Python. I love, I love it so much. Right, okay. Oh, it's so fluffy! Oh my god! Uh, right. You know what? You know what we can do. We can totally do this. One. Could be a nice fusion of oath of ancients paladin and eldritch knight. They're probably also a wisdom based caster. Oliver says I would like this uh, to be pink and yellow. There's a gorgeous mm. moth with those colours. If you can send us a name or a link to Aldrin, that'd be cool. I can show Josh. Uh, nice. Yeah. Definitely like, like sleep powder, um, some sort of powdery thing coming off the wings. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to put the other set of arms in in just a second, but I just want to figure out this helmet first that I'm going to try and make quite mothy. Um, so, like, initially, I, I, mean, I just want to do that, but I think that's going to maybe look a bit rubbish. As, like, oh, this is cool from Connor. Um, less of a power idea, more of a behaviour thing. Perhaps they could covet to emanate light, spells, Ooh. objects, maybe even torches. Yes, okay, yes. Uh, with uh. these, moth knights also serve as genies, says Kaufman. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, Duck Park says, I was going to say maybe dust that causes rapid ageing, like dangerously fast. That's cool. Okay. 
Uh, hang on here, let's just, because uh, I've accidentally done things on two separate, you know what's good. Oh, the one that uh, Alden was talking about is the Venezuelan Pedro Mo. Oh, okay, okay. Um, uh, Covert's Light is on there. Um, how about Temperature Illumination Fungal Plant Polymorph based on, oh, fungi, okay. uh, based on uh, powers, says Nicholas. Sounds very cool. I like the sound of it. Um, uh, fungal Light Abilities. Right, hang on here, hang on here. Okay, okay, I've got some, got some ideas on what to do. If we had, like, if the eyes were up here, uh, right, this is, this is where it could go gross, and I'm going to try and make sure they don't go gross. Um, okay, because insect faces. Sorry, insects, they are a little gross. Um, but if we... Oh, also the elephant... Oh, this might be the one that Aldrin was talking about. Elephant hawk moth, which is like pink and kind of like a greeny... You'll like it a lot. Greeny, yeah. I like mustardy colour. Check that out. Look how cute that is. Oh, that's beautiful. Good call. I mean, I'd still run for my life if it landed on me, but oh, yeah, it's obviously. cute. It's cute. Uh, maybe, maybe. Oh, it definitely should have the Moonbeam spell. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. That's a good call. Um, and also, it spells, the spell, it's, the spells it knows is probably innate rather than learned. Yes. Right, okay. Let me get some other limbs on here. Oh, so most cultures, having done a quick Google, associate the moth with death. Yeah. Seems harsh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I like them from a distance, but also, like, my brother used to catch them and throw them in my face when I was a kid, so <laughs> I have a little bit <laughs> of a bad reaction to them being too close. Yeah. So I can kind of, yeah. <gasps> what oh. if I made the second set of limbs, like, really long mantis limbs? Uh, like, with the kind of sidey things. Uh -huh. that they have and then A that doesn't mess up the silhouette um, and B would be like oh, it's, it's good for spell casting and for like extra attacks they get like a load of extra attacks uh, I may have to just do this guys uh... an insatiable hunger for cloth due to the mess of <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah you can uh, absolutely bypass an encounter with these things by uh uh, by bringing some good fabric. We've been watching The Sewing Bee, actually, The Great British Sewing Bee. I highly recommend it. Um, there's lots of back episodes, and Joe Lyser is one of the people who is um, uh, hosting it. And uh, Joe Lyser absolutely cracks me up, so uh, I would highly recommend it. But yes, I can, I can understand the need for some really good fabric. I really like that. I think that's really tied in this silhouette, actually. The, the, the mantis arms, I don't know if they're on the screen. Yeah, they're right on now. one of us on the screen. I, no, I like that. Really so we've got cool. a spell casting hand, we've got the really massive sword. This is going to absolutely brutalise players. I'm so sorry, players. Um, <laughs> Steve says the... you should have a bad reaction to your brother rather than the moth. <laughs> very, <laughs> very true. Very true. Um, um, so, uh, Kaplan says moths and butterflies will occasionally eat carrion. Um, mm. but butterflies are much brighter so they typically don't get the association and anything associated with the night tends to be death themed that's a really good point yeah I just realised I've saved this whole thing under my Monster Monday tem template so I'm going to have to go in and redo my whole Monster Monday template uh, next time I go, uh, <laughs> go in it's a huge pain but um, whoops it okay. happens um it happens. Paper My Jeeper says, is there any way I could send you a creature stat block? It's not related to this, but I'd love someone especially to see it. Yeah, of your course, absolutely. Your email address is on your yeah. website. It should actually be on the screen right now. Um, I don't know. If it is, yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah. either um, DM me on Instagram. I look at my DMs a decent amount. Um, or email me if it's something you need to link or whatever. Um, but yeah, absolutely. I love seeing people's monsters. I don't always get back to people straight away. There are some people who are waiting for responses from me because I'm I get I have ADHD I get really badly distracted very easily but I will try my best and just keep bugging me about it so that I don't forget um, but thank you so much I would really love to see that 
right. Um, I'm really excited about this creature, by the way. I, I want to use this in the uh, in our in our game at some point. Uh, Aldrin's still gunning for pink and yellow. So I think we should go with that. The elephant so. hawk one that I just showed you. Yeah, yeah. totally. Uh, uh, Yorick says, by the way, did you know that The Wizard of Oz was just part one of a 14-part book series? Do you know, I recently, I was so convinced that the, when I heard the name of the author that I would be like, oh, of course it's that person. <laughs> but when I looked it up, I was quite, quite surprised that I didn't. You know what I mean? It's not like yeah. a household name, despite... The, the books and the film being. Yeah. Uh, yes, to Joe Life, but yeah, Aldrin's also a fan. Yeah, he's good. Kind of looks like a grasshopper that started to turn into a man but hasn't finished the whole process. <laughs> yeah, I think that's yeah. very fair. Uh, uh, they can sense empty wallets within two kilometres of them. <laughs> Definitely has legendary actions. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Uh, uh, I've seen to Yorick. There was another film, but it is considered a bit traumatically creepy. I can have a half memory of having watched the second film as a child. I, I need to Google it and see if it aligns with my like memory of like weird, creepy monkey flying men. Yeah, see, I, I get it mixed up with. I remember watching The Wiz once. Um, which is like an all black uh, reimagining uh, that was like either um, funded by Michael Jackson or he was in it. I can't quite remember. Very hazy memories, but like any sequels that are potentially in my brain are also mixed in with The Wiz. So I don't know what's canonically, if there is canon for The Wizard of Oz. Um, Okay, yeah. So I think it has to be pink and yellow because um, there's more calls for it here. Yeah, for sure. We'll definitely. And it's not all our old dream. Feeds back in the map. That's all good. I appreciate. Oh, Yorick's in green. Oh. It's the draw spider in the worst. Well, it was kind of like a yellowy green, so can we yeah. say that that kind of mustard and pink colour? Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll work on it. We'll just see. We'll see, see what works out. See where huh? Yeah. And it goes very organic and kind of like wooden with the armour and like kind of have these little gonna add the creep back in a tiny bit just by kind of like where does the armour begin and where does the person end that kind of thing um, and we'll just kind of work on oh, that oh yeah um, in a monochromatic colour scheme would contrast quite well with the rainbow sword don't forget Ooh, it's yes. a rainbow sword rainbow sword is 100% going in don't you worry I'm gonna make that thing translucent it's gonna have glitter and stuff going on it's gonna be basically a a, pl a pride annihilation uh, sword of doom uh, is what we're going for. Um, Nicolette's working on the spells list here. Um, Excellent. Darkness, fire shield, polymorph, true polymorph, chain shape, frost. Uh, watch Nerd Immersion's video on on the spells from Icewindale Realm of the Frost Maiden. Ooh, okay. Fireball, cone of light, cone of cold. Cone of cold, cold yeah. Cone of cold is always going to be a, a good call. I think like oh, maybe maybe using like the kind of base stats of a Death Knight type thing, and uh, yeah, we're, we're gonna we're gonna have some good stats with this. I'm really excited to see what you guys come up with for some interesting powers as well. Like, how else are we gonna have this thing act in combat? Like, what's the strategy with this creature? Because so often I think like homebrew monsters have a lot of powers and they have a lot of cool stuff they become a really good toy box for a dm to like ah oh, you know i really want to play that but why does a dm use this creature other than it being cool like what's its purpose what's the strategy in combat um why are you picking this over another creature of the similar cr you know um that's what we want to know um so steve is is basically doing your monster monday research for you behind the scenes Excellent. this is uh, moths are also associated with intuition Revelation, transformation, and tenacity. I like I like these streams. I Google so much weird stuff that I wouldn't normally check out and learn things. I feel like that's Josh with like his research for every Monster Monday. It's yeah, just oh, did you know that this is connected to this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So I'm much. glad you went down the weird Google rabbit hole as well, Steve. Yeah. Uh, green would go well with the rainbow sword. Um, Oh, 
Yeah, it's, it's basically Team Green versus Team Yellow and Pink. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Well, I think. <laughs> Can the sword be named Chroma Borealis? Chroma Borealis. Yeah, absolutely, it can. Oh yeah, is the emotional manifestation element still be included? Oh yeah, if we so, should totally would that, do that be a good base for their behaviour and spells? That's a good call. Yeah. yeah. Can we like link that in somehow with the sort of being attracted to the light and? Yeah, uh, I, that I feel there's certainly a lot of pride that goes into being a knight. So maybe like um, something about uh, over the top pride manifest in this kind of creature might be a good call. I don't know. This is this is why we need help, guys. This is why we need your responses. What do you think? What do you think could be this kind of emotional? Uh, side to this creature and oh. like how do these creatures come about are they just like dreamed into existence are they like a fake creature specifically made for this purpose what's the deal um okay Connor's team yellow uh, uh look up the rosy maple moth it's bright yellow and pink and it's wow yeah excellent uh, oh people are for suggesting dark colors as well okay uh, rosy maple moth, moth is very extra. Yeah, it is. It's kind of like it's similar in a way to the elephant hawk moth, but it's just it's like a rhubarb custard sweet. Oh, do so you get rhubarb custard sweets elsewhere? Is that a UK thing? But yeah. that's exactly like the color scheme for this. Rhubarb custards were always my favorite as well. They are good. They are amazing. Oh, maybe the image of melting faces in the wing cloak. Ooh, that's cool. That's very grim. I kind of like it. If I can still do that and have it look beautiful, I will do that. But I'm trying very hard. This face is looking really cool. Thank you very much. I kind of like you have done well with this sort of merging. Like, where does the armor start and where does the space? Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to sticking it up. <laughs> Beige and grey with a rainbow star. Mm hmm. <laughs> No, but definitely beige and grey are like my two nemeses, uh, which I think you know, obviously, um, but still. Is this maybe an English thing, like primary school custard, um, Aldrin saying like, I don't think we ever got custard at primary school. Maybe not. Oh no, maybe. Oh. I had to take a packed lunch, I was so desperate for school lunches, but my mum always all like, pack me really healthy. Oh. <laughs> Look how that backfired, mum. <laughs> <laughs> Um, following the light could be a metaphor for religion and how Ooh. individuals get caught up in that they're unable to see other viewpoints. That Interesting, I do like that. Um, I feel like this fey creature uh, could have its own existence for some reason, mm -hmm. keeping corruption in forests from happening. Yeah, Ooh, that's a like, good call. Like kind of thing going on. Yeah, I like this idea. Uh, You take grey, grey rage. I do. I, I, yeah. The the trend for homes being painted that elephant butt grey, uh, and just like magnolia, everything, uh, I find offensive. Uh, what if they manif were manifested from strong emotions along mm. with other criteria? That emotion influencing this night's appearance and personality. Oh, that's a nice idea. I like that a lot. Or Steve says, how about they are the manifestations of the will of the moon deity of the setting, dreams, mysticism, all that, even seduction perhaps. They appear spontaneously somehow in the Bay world. Which mm, sounds cool. Okay. I definitely like being tied to the moon. Um, it seems like a really good thing for moths in general. Um, um, so, yeah, I, I, like, I like that idea. Sort of heralds the moon goddess or whoever i'm getting strong paladin energy here yeah definitely that's, yeah that's a good call because there, there's a an underutilized in my experience i don't know if it's this is the case um paladins or is it clerics maybe both having that um um the green basically they like the kind of uh, wild paladin i think um uh, the McElroy dad uh, was supposed to be this kind of um, cleric, 
I think it was. Um, but yeah, I always think of like moth nights and things like that when it comes to uh, that particular version of what a paladin can do. The Light of the Moon guides them. That's what's cool. That's like quite a cool motto as well. Yeah. Like, for, you know, if they're a paladin. Yeah, I like the sound of that. Oh yeah, we do need a name for this uh, individual and a name for the race. Hmm. Yeah, it kind of has that light in the dark theme going for it as well. Yeah, I like that. That might be quite nice for Pride Month as well, like something a bit more positive. Yeah. You know, like a bit more of a celebration. Yeah, Rather definitely. than going down the too dark kind of route. Yeah, I'd very much like to keep it. This is this is the... We're making our Pride Ambassador here. Yeah, and uh, Steve's in, it taps back into the Green Knight thing from earlier. Yeah, definitely. Oh right, that's cool. Uh, race name idea, Mothanora. Ooh, I like that. That's very cool. It could be that this is uh, this one is the strongest or most well-known example of its race. That's a very cool idea. Um, another suggestion on spells, uh, spell list from Enigly. Um, the light cantrip, scorching ray, flaming flame spear, wall of ice, wall of fire, holy weapon. Uh, Holy weapon's definitely in there for sure. Seeking radiance, plant growth, spite growth. Spite growth, yeah. Spite growth. Spite growth is fantastic. Um, arms of Hadar and Slate Stone. Is is um spike growth sorry, it's been so long since I've actually like played as a player, but like is spike growth the same as bones of the earth? Because I remember I had a wizard with bones of the earth, uh like the wizard that I played most, um, and I absolutely loved that spell. But I can never remember if the spike growth and that are the same spell or if they're slightly different. Um, Cavman's kind of summing up this quite well. Is if this is a kind of knight in shining armor, mm. armor knight, then the sort of light dark, um, light or sort of knight in the dark theme as well as oh, yeah. That was written oh. much more eloquently than I did. It's all good. I could make a, um, I could turn the uh, line work glare if I do some strong shadows into like kind of starlight and things yeah. like that would be pretty cool. Depends how much time we've got and things. I'd like to make this pretty Spike cool. Spike growth gives a 20 foot cube. Bones of the earth is like pillars of earth. Yeah, that's more what I'm thinking of actually. Um, I definitely think uh, we could maybe. What do you guys think about having the druids kind of uh, pack to the swarm druid kind of energy about it? I, I don't think this kind of thing would like throw uh, creatures at um, at enemies, but maybe it would. I don't know. What do you think? Um, uh, Duck Clark has suggested Carolina for the name, but then Carvman's came back and said Carolina. Oh, Caroluna. Caroluna, I like the sound I of that. Like That's the pretty cool. That. Yeah. Um, Good adaptation. Yeah, Bones of the Earth is a druid exclusive spell which gives you six pillars of 30 foot tall stone pillars. Excellent. Um, um, she could be known as the Lady of the Lunar Well. Um, um, speaking to the speaking of the Green Knight, perhaps one of its abilities could be to keep fighting without its head, just like the Arthurian Green Knight. Um. Excellent. It's looking really cool. Thank you very much. I'm enjoying it a lot, actually. I don't think it's too gross. I think it's got it's got some gross. It got it got more gross than I intended, mm. but I still really like it. I think we can pull this back to being pretty beautiful. Yeah, I think the color choice will help with that like yeah, I think sure. you know it could go either way at the moment because those Prantis Prantis legs <laughs> Prantis legs are yeah. kind of like a little bit grim but you know I, I believe in you you can you can make something that's not disgusting thank you I'll try my best I I want to do more not disgusting things I want to do more uh, beautiful and ornate things um, and tap into that side of my art because it's something I rarely get to explore um, and you know I just want to 
do something different. Um, but we'll we'll see what I manage to actually do. Um, but then that's kind of the fae, isn't it? It's like it's beautiful, but it's also grim, and you know, it's got all this uh, nasty and nice all kind of fused into one chaotic thing. So. Connor says maybe they're aiming for becoming an archery but they don't get along with either core Ooh, uh, so they're stuck trying to manage their own devices oh kind of like a shogun type thing they have to uh, appeal to both courts really they're not um, I'm maybe using the wrong word there maybe shogun's the wrong word um, um uh, Peeper, I mean, Deeper says um, maybe has the advantage against creatures that cast fire are on fire and produce light Oh yeah. Um, Kavman says um, about as gross as like a transformer, just fairy flesh instead of alien metal. <laughs> yeah. Um. Tania, I think that's how it's said, is Latin for moth. Ooh. According to yes, Google. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> it's a word that. with a nice mouthfeel. Could that uh, be expanded out into a name? Yeah. Or maybe it's the title of this character. Yeah. Um, we will definitely cool. use something in relation to that. I think that's very nice. Yeah. <laughs> Mark says, or it could just rip its own head off and use it as an extra bludgeoning weapon. That's uh, not keeping it beautiful there, Yorick. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Aldrin is also loving this diva esque rough. rough. She looks fabulous. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, I'm liking that. Um, okay, now how do I quite want that to fit in? I think I want to do... Oh yeah, definitely has, can see in magical darkness. Oh, 100%, 100%. Um, they could manifest a bunch of different bugs. They could also be a kind of ascended follower of a powerful archery. Yes. Um, I definitely feel like... Um, uh, like insect swarm and stuff might be something that they like to use, um, that kind of thing. How do you feel about? Or do you think this character would use druid-like sort of like insect magic, or do you think that they would be unwilling to put insects in harm's way in that sense? Where where do you think this kind of uh, character would would stand on that? Uh, Nicola says um, its role is going to be mostly a controller blaster mixed with a warrior with high charisma she's not super tough mm. and she makes only two attacks that deal high damage if you get what I mean I guess yeah no I totally I'm get I'm assuming you. this is a medium large creature yeah I, I'd assumed medium or large um, yeah I'd, I'd I'd say maybe like seven feet maximum was kind of my thinking. Imposing, but not necessarily like... I, I want this to have kind of like a Dark Souls feel to it. You know, like they have the horrifying massive monsters, but it's always the beautiful and the human-sized enemies that scare you the most in Dark Souls. Okay, Cameron, you're going to have to let me know is it exactly how it sounds because he's... Apparently very fond of Pathfinder's Vomit Swarm spell. Vomit Swarm? Yeah, you need to expand on that. What? Uh, I don't think you do. <laughs> um, seven foot tall is medium size. Yeah, there you go. Let's, let's maybe do a bit of that. I feel like this might be one of those streams that goes on for a little while, by the way, guys, because uh, I have a lot of little ornate details I'm excited about putting in. Um, so uh, make sure to grab yourself a snack and a drink um, while we chat about this guy, lady, person, thing, uh, insect, monstrosity. Oh, this is cool. Uh, for this character, perhaps only summons moths either to attack only light fire based enemies or maybe they fly strands of silk about to entangle people or build structures which is really cool oh I like that yes and that ties back into who is it who is saying about the um, uh, like 
like um, sort of like battle control abilities, kind of like um, map control. I, the word is really escaping me right now. Um, if you haven't noticed, I can only focus on one thing at a time, and either speech or drawing. And it turns out drawing really you does do take okay. priority. Yeah, <laughs> I appreciate that. I mean, I'm just concentrating on reading, and that's not going so well. <laughs> We've got a new commenter. Oh, hello, welcome. Uh, hi, it's Becky. I uh, definitely would use bug magic. I feel like they are pretty chaotic, so I wouldn't be too bothered about protecting the bugs. Very so, good call. Um, I think I've just sort of skimmed over a few things there. Right? People are mm. saying maybe they use bugs, or would they not put bugs in danger? Yeah. Like, so it's like that between the two, but yeah. Becky's saying that they're kind of chaotic, so... Uh, all of them says go as long as you like. That seems to be excellent. Um, excellent. Yeah, same with Patrick. He's at work. Good stuff. I knew. I knew some people were kind of driving home. Um, I'll zoom out so you guys can see what we're working on so far. Um, he says, I feel like aesthetically, if it was defeated, it would erupt into a swarm of moths that can rejoin in like one d12 days. Oh, very vampire-like. Oh, cool. I like that a lot, actually. Um, okay. Uh, oh, hang on, here's the vomit swarm. You vomit forth a swarm that attacks all other creatures within its area. The swarm begins adjacent to you. If no living creatures are within the area, it moves in one direction of your drive. All right, so you're, oh, right. you're vomiting a swarm of like insects. Right. I was thinking just like yeah. a like a wall of vomit. like just. God. Yeah, so I'm getting kind of uh, John Coffey in uh, Green Mile kind of Yes, vibes. that's what that sounds like. You know. um, Minring, uh, thank you very much, Minring, um, says, any local cryptids to where you grew up? Oh. So if you got any... Yeah, so one one thing that I want you guys to kind of keep in your minds is this, this year, I think we talked about this last stream, that um, we... Um, Last year I did uh, Inktober and I really enjoyed it, but I, I kind of feel like you know that's done now. I you know might come back to it another time, um, but um, I wanted to do a kind of creepy Cryptober um, this this year. So I'm going to do kind of cryptids um, as the kind of theme for uh, this year, and I'm not I'm not sure. You know, what I really want to cover in that, whether I want to do uh, cryptids from all over the world, if I want to focus on like region by region or what have you. This is definitely where we're going to do things like Mothman and stuff like that, and I'll make stats for all these creatures if they're not already in the game. Um, but um, my favorite cryptid, I think I was talking to Raptor Dio about this in our video chat at one point. Um, and my favorite cryptid of all time from is from the UK um, and is spring Jack. I absolutely love the story of spring Jack. Um, and I'm so excited to do a Monster Monday is about him at some point. I, I consider him a cryptid. I suppose what's the definition of a cryptid? Is it just kind of like an urban legend? Because uh, that's urban I legend. It's more like a creature, no? So. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if it's a creature, then then fair dues. I, I consider him to be a cryptid, but perhaps not. Um, in which case, I don't think... An animal whose exists and their survival is disputed or unsubstantiated, such hmm. as the Yeti. Okay. It's an official thing. Right. I, is, he, is he literally a man with springs in his heels, or is he like got springy legs so yeah that's kind of one of the things that's amazing about him um it's not really clear okay um whether or not he's a devil a demon uh a kind of red cap like creature uh mm. all this kind of stuff so that would um, be sort of london ken yes. sort of thing is there anything from yorkshire that is particularly um not really that i can for those who don't know, I lived half my life in the south of England, and then the other, well, I'd say not really half anymore actually, but I, I spent the first 10 years of my life in uh, uh, the south of England, which is the kind of, you know, where my accent is from, the kind of like BBC uh, style received pronunciation uh, England, and then uh, the next 10 years were spent in uh, Leeds, in Yorkshire. Um, so that's your kind of uh, John Snow style northern accent, um, and I was very much 
uh, I love Yorkshire, but being you know being a southerner, there's a there's a huge um, dislike for people from the south in Yorkshire. Um, so I was always a bit sort of other. So I never really considered myself a part of being Yorkshire as much as I had wanted to. So like I don't really know many of the kind of myths and legends of the area, I suppose. But um, there are plenty of ones in Scotland. There are tons in oh Scotland, God, really, yeah. really cool ones. So of ridiculous ones. And, yeah. And some downright creepy ones as well. Yeah, of course. Uh, I'm just going to catch you up on the comments. Yeah, please. Uh, right. Uh, Catherine says, start with spiders. You can spear up wasps before eventually whole brigades of army ants. No, thank um, you. Nicola says, if you get close, it's relatively easy to beat by warrior character. And if the spellcasters are kept at the gate, uh, at a safe distance, you're going to win. So high AC, vulnerable to fire damage, immune to cold. Uh, Goop says maybe they could be the manif manifestation of parental care. Ooh. They have this gentle demeanour so long as their moth children aren't harmed. But Ooh. once their swarm is threatened, you could work on the second phase. I really still. like that idea. Because I, I, I see this as quite a combat... Like I, I see this as very Death Knight, really. I like... I like the idea of um, like the fire vulnerability and things like that, but this is a thing with like sides for arms. It's got like one spell casting hand, um, and it's got a massive rainbow blade. So I definitely think close quarters combat is going to be something this thing is going to be expert at. Um, as much as I do love those ideas, um, I think that's something we need to definitely work in. Um, but we'll we'll see what else you guys come up with. There could be all sorts. Uh, Alden says, I just googled Springfield Jack and then comes back and it says, Springfield! <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it's like the kind, exactly the kind of villain to go, meh! <laughs> yes, yeah. So there's been lots of really interesting versions of him. Um, and I, he's basically uh, an allegory for Jack the Ripper um, and uh, sort of took place in similar sort of times and did similar sort of things. He's very much kind of, in my head, meets the same uh, sort of feeling as um, Bigfoot because there's so many stories about him and so many sightings um, rather than just being this kind of like myth or legend. It's like mm -hmm. people claim to have really seen him and stuff. So I, I don't know, I, I kind of count him as a cryptid. I'm not sure why this has been... Becky's message has been flagged for review, but oh. Becky says, "I wonder why. I wonder why there's always something about your accent that niggles the back of my mind. You've got a local accent." Yes. I don't. I don't know why that got uh, put in a timeout, but there you go, it's back. Yeah. Well, there you go. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I've I've got an accent from all over, really, uh, all over the UK, um, and uh, I like to say. It sounds like a congealed oh. out of pure Radio 4. Um, uh, Zachary Richards has just joined us. Oh, um, welcome, Zach. And Make It Weak to Dancing Lights. Is their weak to Dancing Lights, yes. I like this a lot. Uh, let me just stick that in the suggestions box. Eritami uh, says, Is Black Shark or Church Grim considered a cryptid? I've never heard of mm. either of those. I've heard of Black Shark. Uh, yeah. Steve says probably not, uh, but some folks believe it's real around here anyway. Mm. Okay, that's one to Google. Um, just learned about the tall man in the mountains from Scotland as a cryptid. Mm. Oh, oh. Leith Moor, I would say. Mm. It's Gaelic. Um, we're, mm. We recently attempted to learn a bit of Gaelic, and yeah. basically you need to hear it spoken rather than read it. If it's a fascinating, Kevin. fascinating language, though, because they yeah. they have far fewer letters than uh, yeah, we do. Sixteen letters. So there's a lot of sound combinations that kind of make the complete opposite sound to what you might expect in English, which is very cool. Um, mm. um Goop says I ended up using Spring Hill Jack as inspiration for one of the characters he played. For an evil campaign, mm -hmm. things got quite out of hand playing them. Yeah, I, I think that's the only way that evil campaigns ever go. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Very little control. I think it's one of those things. Like, I'd love to run an evil campaign as a DM, but I think also like 
I <laughs> I don't know how well I would keep up with it if that makes sense. Like, how evil are the players going to be? How evil? But like, I could see myself writing a kind of Suicide Squad level evil, um, like selfish. Mm. But I'm not sure I could do a kind of like <laughs> curse you, he man level of evil. I love that. Um, Mustache twiddling evil, as you say. Mm. Uh, Yark says perhaps she could have a pair of squires to summon her a lot with a song, just like the Shojin summon Mothra from the Godzilla movies. Ooh, I don't know. I, I'm I'm new to the whole uh, kaiju uh, Godzilla level. Uh, um idea do I want to separate those do I want to bifurcate that into wings yes I do have you heard of the Lechuza from Texas no nope, please tell, tell me tell us more about that I'm really uh, excited about um, Cryptober because I don't know like there's, there's a lot of Japanese ones that I really want to do um, mostly because like it's a mythology that I don't know much about um, and I'm always eager to learn new stuff, but at the same time, I don't know, like, I want to do everyone's favourites, and I, this is this is mostly why I leave things up to, like, a, a vote on Patreon, because I can never actually decide what I want to draw. I need someone to tell me. Mm. <laughs> uh, Black Shark, mm -hmm. if you're interested, um, yes. is English folklore. Um, Black Shark, Old Shark, um, meaning shark, is simply the name uh, given to a ghostly black dog. Oh! Which I think I've seen that they're illustrated a lot in sort of the sort of Yeah, British, it, the Grim. Um, it's kind of associated with the Grim and also the, like, the Beast of Bodmin Moor and things like that. That makes sense. Interesting. Yeah. That's Interesting. very cool. Okay, I didn't realise that's what Black Shark was. That's cool. Oh, that's interesting. Cameron says the murderous jacks from Victorian UK are kind of odd. As though... As though they seem quite evil and vicious, there was a lot of contemporary fiction that depicted them as heroes. Yeah, well, the reason why I mm. first got interested in um, Spring Hill Jack was because, you know, growing up I was hugely into comic books. And the first ever Penny Dreadful. Uh, um, just before you get into that, that there, just yep. say goodbye <laughs> to Apocalyptic Moth who's off ah. to get their brain fixed, which I hope oh, that's not as. Congratulations on your brain fixing. Um, and, <laughs> Painful uh, as it sounds. But yeah. anyway, thank you for joining us, Apocalyptic Moth. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope you have a very fixed brain. Uh, congrats. <laughs> Sorry. Take no worries. Uh, I, yeah, anyway, I believe the first um, comic book, aka the, in the day it was, it was known as Penny Dreadful in Victorian era, uh, was of Spring Hill Jack. I believe either that was very popular, but I, I think it was the first one. This is, you know, you're seeing the, the sort of like raw, uncut version of what a, uh, of a Monster Monday is like. Here's my, here's my wild reckoning that I have yet to actually research and find out whether or not that's true. Um, but I believe that's the case. Um, and it would certainly be a line of inquiry that I would go into in uh, in a Monster Monday, even if it ended up being something quite disappointing. Like, no, it was never in a Penny Dreadful. You've completely misheard that, Josh. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I I seem to believe it was like the origin of comics was Spring Hill Jack, basically, um, where they painted him as a hero sometimes, and uh, I just think that's a really weird thing to have done. So. Yeah. Um, life is strange. But, um, yeah, I want to hear your favourite cryptids and what you would put on the kind of cryptober list. Um, obviously, I mean, things like Mothman's going to be on there. I really want to draw a Chupacabra. would be really cool. Um, I actually have stats for Chupacabras as well um, from the um, Cobalt Press books, uh, which I have yet to use, but I... You know, I mean, it's a chupacabra. It's going to be fun. Um, so, yeah, I'd be interested to hear your versions. Do you have a particular favourite kind of cryptid creature? I mean, oh, sorry, I thought yeah. you were asking. Oh, yeah, I was no, out of the room there. I, I no, no, I've, I've asked the, uh, the the guys watching, but um, I don't know if you personally uh, do. I mean, I quite like Ursel, um Kelpie's cryptids. I, yeah, I think so. I think they're a bit more old school. I think maybe cryptids are more modern or something. But just basically in Scotland, like when you're a kid, you get the start of it. It's always in children's books. They're really cute, like oh, seahorses and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when you get older, you realise that the full story is that they 
entangle. <laughs> they <laughs> entice children to pet them, yeah. basically clap them, because that's what we see in Scotland. I give them a clap and then uh, their hands get entangled in their hair and then they pull them out to sea and drown them, mm-hmm. basically. Which I always like, I just like that moment when you're old enough to get the full story and you're suddenly like, oh, why were you telling us that? Like, yeah. well, that was cute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, eh. Uh... <laughs> My girl Nessie. <laughs> My girl Nessie. Is that from Zach? Yeah. Yes. So that's uh, Raptadio. Uh, is, ah, uh, right. So I was with, uh, with Jelly Bean. Oh, yeah. yay. Yeah. <laughs> Jelly Bean's dad. Yeah. You could do a not deer from Appalachia. Oh, the not deer. I'm, so I'm, I've been hearing a lot about them recently. Really? Yeah, so... They're a really cool one. Is that like uh, as in like what's making that noise in the words? Well, it's not deer. Yeah, basically. So people keep seeing these things that are, for all intents and purposes, deer, but for a reason that you cannot, like in the same way that like, you know, the silence in Doctor Who. Oh, right. Yeah, they're like, they're deer, but they're not deer. Like but you under, don't understand how, what they are. Yeah. Other than that, they're not deer. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so like they have creepy. like, they have like longer mouths than deer that go f- too far back and they might be a bit too gangly and they just seem to like, seem like they know what you're talking about and stuff. Like, I like the idea of that. Yeah, the not deer. Um, <laughs> Zachary Richards says, <laughs> looks around my property. What's a not deer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, Alden is in awe of how fast he can work and so much detail you put in. I'm exactly the same. Thank you very much. I'm glad you enjoy it. Um, well, Goop's uh, going to head out. No um, worries. Regal may suggest a cryptid known as a squonk. They're hideous pigs that dissolve into a pool of their own tears when seen. Oh. Or a, a squonk. Oh. Well, I mean, yeah, they're on the list now. Um, yeah. Well, thank you for joining us, Goop. Uh, yeah, says, my favourite yeah. cryptids are Bigfoot, Nessie, Mothman, the Yeti, the Jersey Devil. Jersey Co- Devil, I couple. so want to draw the Jersey Devil. Cupa Cabra? Cupa Cabra? Cupa Cabra. And the Beast of Bodmin Moor. The Beast of Bodmin Moor is always a good one. That's always uh, my parents, whenever we were driving through any kind of moor whatsoever, they'd always like, they'd put on a voice as well as like, the Beast of Bodmin Moor every time. Uh-huh. Uh, so, yeah, that's always a good one. I love the Exmoor Beast. Ex- mm-hmm. Church Grimms too, says Becky. Um, tree Octopus is my favourite cryptid. Never heard of that one. I think they're even in D&D as well, really? actually, Tree Octopi. Um, tree... tree Octopus Facts as well. Uh, <laughs> go straight for the facts. Don't don't mess around with this. Uh, Internet Hoax created in 1998 by a human writer under the pseudonym Lyle Zettel. Okay, How fictitious endangered species of cephalopod. <laughs> God. I love all the old um, internet hoaxes. Yeah, definitely. Kind of the Blair Witch style. Uh... Siberian dragons, the Moos from ha- Hawaii, Ooh. Aslan and Pan- uh, Pantanak from the Philippines. Ooh, okay. Yes, we definitely need to save this conversation and go back. Oh yeah, for sure. Like, I've bunch. already like I've not been taking enough notes on the powers that have been suggested. So mm. when I'm typing this up, I'm gonna have to be just looking yeah. through that basically. Uh, I'm gonna have to be watching this again. Yeah, this I mean, week. I think since this one's so detailed, what you what you could do is you can fill out the information afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, no, for sure. This is. Uh, I'm Otherwise not gonna be. We'll be here till midnight. Yeah, no. I'm just gonna draw <laughs> the creature and then like tomorrow or the next couple of days, I'll I'll go on D and D Beyond and actually like put this thing up because uh, it's going to take a considerable amount of time to make all the stats and everything like that but I do want to hear like people's power suggestions and all this kind of stuff there's been some really really good ones and I know largely what I want to do with it um, but you know obviously I, I want to have your input yeah, like, I, I don't know can you just stumble upon people's profiles in d and Beyond like I'm you imagining kind of someone can. browsing around Oh clicking onto yours and just be like, what in there? The draw is this guy. Like, <laughs> what, your desk what is the shroom pig? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this you guy can, on. indeed. I had a comment the other day on my D&D Beyond profile that was like, uh, that was talking about like, why would you make this thing with this? And it's just like, 
Don't ask me, man. It was, oh. <laughs> it was the patrons. Can I, can I, I don't, I hope you don't mind me bringing this up. Mm? The, my favourite ever comment Rush has had on the channel is, do not like the fake oh. accent. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know if that's someone that just like, thinks that you're faking your accent or they just don't like the accent in general, but, so I, I like nobody chooses to walk around with that accent in Scotland. No. Like it doesn't well, work out well. It didn't you, work out so. well in Yorkshire either. <laughs> like I mean, I I I'm glad that you guys seem to like my accent. But I, if I could have had literally any other accent on earth growing up, I would definitely have done that. I've earned the internet kudos that I get from uh, being posh. Um, <laughs> But growing up, it was an absolute nightmare um, because I was always just made fun of for sounding like this. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's like, how dare you? Uh, I think that I... He says very poshly. Um, <laughs> mm, I just like the yeah. thought that maybe they think, oh, this guy just wanted to seem fancy on this channel, so he's put <laughs> this posh accent on. Yeah. Oh, dear. Uh, yeah, I do not. Ooh, wouldn't have picked what about it. A skinwalker. Oh, skinwalkers. So, uh, oh yeah, you're not. Is it? Is it? You're not supposed to say skinwalkers. Oh no, you're not supposed to go into a forest and say skinwalkers. Oh really? Uh, yeah, uh, or whistle um, in in the forest at night because. Oh, uh, mm. Do they? Do they? Take your body. I can't quite remember, but yeah, Skinwalkers are very popular as well. They, they, they're definitely oh. going to be on the list. I'm wondering what's to know if you can do a Texan accent. Uh, I can. I can do a kind of general Southern accent. Uh, so, uh, Yvonne and I have gone to Nashville a few times. We love Tennessee, um, and there's like there's kind of two that I can do, but I don't know. Like, okay, so. Um, I had a character called Wyatt who had like the kind of like Matthew Mercer doing a uh, kind of McCree style uh, accent like that that's not really like anyone's accent but it sounds kind of deep and it sounds a bit like a cowboy. <laughs> um, and then the other one that I really love was that there was radio adverts when we were in Nashville last uh, from Jim's Boot Barn that had that kind of accent that uh, I don't exactly know where that's from but you get... Uh, two different kinds of boots for a dollar. Uh, it's like, <laughs> like, what are you making the boots out of, Jim? What are you making the boots out of that they're that cheap? Um, but I love that accent so, so damn much. <laughs> uh, it's no one's accent, but it's amazing. Uh, Aldrin and Steve are um, offering their solidarity for the posh accent. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you very much, brothers. <laughs> York says, I have an accent voice. I'd rather have any accent. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> any accent or voice rather than the one I've got whenever I hear myself speak uh, all I hear is the village idiot I'm sure that's not true no, no, no. You're, you and I chat fairly regularly and you sound like a very smart and sophisticated person when we chat so you no you sound very good everyone sounds a bit weird to themselves like whenever yeah. you hear yourself recorded it's just like oh my god no oh man, yeah totally I've, I've come to terms with that now listening to my own voice <laughs> so much to edit audio but yeah it was very cringeworthy when I, just, I first started I can't wait till you get live subtitles on actual yes. human interactions because oh God, so yeah. many people struggle to understand me no. <laughs> um, Aldrin says that um, uh, Josh and you, uh, he and you have uh, pretty much the same accent oh really there you go both I mean so here's the real test I I was uh, born, actually I suppose where I was born doesn't really actually reflect my accent, but I grew up in particular in a place called Hampshire, uh, near Fleet, but not uh, not quite in Fleet. So how close were, how close are slash were you to Fleet? Because uh, that's going to be the true test if we, if we genuinely sound super similar. Um, because that is, I mean, Fleet had like a kind of, hence the, like the, hence the name, had a kind of um, naval base, I think it was. Um, but otherwise, there was not much of a reason to go there ever. Oh, this is so creepy. Uh, Minring says, I heard that if you whistle at night in Texas and someone whistles back, uh, it's a like, Bahooza and you're doomed. Is that the skinwalker? 
Or is that something separate? I think that's, sorry, I, did I not read that one out? It was a suggestion of that earlier. Oh, I got lost in the comments. It's all right. That's I'll, one to Google as well. I'll go through all this again. Uh, Nicoly, um, since he was arrested for powers, immune to necrotic psychic, uh, can dodge action as a bonus action, but recharges on a five, five to six Excellent. on a six, but has low hit points and con. Okay. Like, book that one, mark that one for when you come yeah, back. Yeah, no worries, I'll that. come back and have a look at that. Excellent. And I'm hearing a lot of stuff about like low con and low combat, and like this is a fully armored uh, creature. I definitely think vulnerable to fire because like moth and all this kind of stuff, and distracted by lights and things like that. But I definitely like hard disagree in terms of uh, the lack of combat capabilities. Although I do very much appreciate the input, and will 100% uh, add your suggestions to this creature. Uh, uh, Becky says the same George I'm from Winchester slash, slash Pompey oh. so I bargain that she sends posher than me oh my goodness my my people you're here yeah <laughs> <laughs> I mean out posh yeah we it doesn't can, happen yeah. often up it's here very either. rare um, but um, yeah I, I, I appreciate it you've uh, you've done well to make it this far <laughs> Uh, Steve says, yeah, this lady is a battle beast. I'm with you, Josh. Yeah, I think so. I think definitely having like some very strategic vulnerabilities, for sure. And I love the idea of uh, fire uh, vulnerability. And I think someone said either cold vulnerability or cold resistance. I can't quite remember. Yeah, I think um, that's why I suggested that. Um, I really like that idea. But I think I kind of like... I definitely think I'm going to inspire most of the stats around um, a Death Knight in terms of like having that combat and magic uh, kind of feel to it, and like it's really about like distracting them with lights. I love the dancing lights um, vulnerability type thing, um, and uh, loving the idea of like sleep dust and things when it flies. Yeah. Um, Although I really love the idea of the dust that ages you super quick, like, yes, like Indiana Jones kind of drinking stink. that. Oh the yeah, that cut the that's line. very cool. We're definitely gonna have to come back. To, you know what? I'm gonna write that in the suggestion. Moonring right is asking, has anything scary ever happened to you? I think this is like move, um, continuing on from the whistling at night and hearing a whistle back. Uh, uh, okay, yeah. Um, yeah, hang on here. Let me just write this down. I mean, I to, once uh, my brother took me dance. and a friend to an abandoned castle that had been used as a where um a museum, so it was full of mannequins and stuff in the middle of the night. But he'd also arranged for his friend to show up and scare the the, the Jesus out of us. <laughs> and I've never, I've never been so scared in my life. Like I actually just we almost crashed through. <laughs> like the decaying staircase to get out of there. I this mean, was one of the first stories that I heard when we first started dating. I can't remember why it came up. Um, I think I had I'm like a kind of traumatized by it. I've never been so scared in all my life. I almost abandoned my friend because she got stuck trying to get over a wall, <laughs> yeah. and I was like, "Just move, just move." I think this was said in the context of like, if we're ever in danger, I will just leave you. Yes. <laughs> just, yeah. I was good, tested, good, and good my fight or flight yeah. thing was definitely flight. <laughs> What about you? Yeah, I didn't see. Um, uh, I don't know. Like, so uh, when my family moved up to Yorkshire from the south, um, my dad had just got a new job, and it was a, a well-paid job. Um, so we were moving into like I went to private school, uh, which was really terrifying in itself um, um, because we weren't from that kind of stock um, uh, and you know we moved into this big fancy house that was like a very very old house and we were used to kind of like new build houses and all that kind of stuff um, and uh, I wanted a you know I wanted my bedroom to be in the attic because I was like hey Arnold school I want that um, and uh, this old uh, like pre-Victorian uh, kind of house that was 
just generally terrifying everything creaked and all this kind of stuff um, and I remember like every single night there would be this like up the stairs uh, into the attic and like creaking up to my bed every single night and I was just like it's just the pipes it's just the pipes it's just the pipes it's just the house settling it's just the house settling um, and all this kind of stuff but I remember once uh, trying to scare myself for some reason um, and I decided to like knock on this massive I had this like pillar that was in the middle of my bedroom like a supporting beam um and i decided to knock on that um because i just didn't want to ever sleep i suppose um like a kind of rhythmic thing um and i remember it took like a minute or two but i heard the exact same noises back and then i tried it a few more times and i got the same noises back um and like i don't i don't believe in ghosts the like the cognizant part of my brain goes like that's not real that's not a thing um, but as a child, and like still to this day, I was like, no, it's never pretty, seen pretty, again. pretty no. definitely happened. Um, I don't know what the explanation for that is, but uh, it still scared me. So, um, I mean, you also woke up in that attic room once with your bed absolutely covered in wasps. Yeah, I mean, there is. That's not like yeah. a, in a horror movie. Yeah. Kind of like saying to get out of the house. <laughs> There's a new wasp nest every single year in my bedroom. And yeah, I woke up with the bed completely covered in wasps. And um, no. yeah, that was me. You know, in hindsight, maybe I'm just bad at reading signs. Uh, like maybe that was just, you know, uh, you done screwed up, eh, Aaron? That was, uh, that was my sign to leave. A says, I used to work in haunted houses and did lots of planning and participating in them, which mm. sounds like good prep for DMing. Yeah, definitely. Like That sounds really cool. Yeah. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. Did that, like, remove the scariness of other things for you when you saw, like, the workings behind the scenes? Or did you... I think I would just still get fright every time like someone screamed or something. <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> yeah, uh, Aldrin says, well, wasps are a different kind of evil. Yes. They are pure malice. I learned the other day um, that wasps coat you in a pheromone, um, not even from stinging you, just from being around you, um, if you annoy them, mm -hmm. um, so that other wasps know to hate you in advance. Which is like the most evil thing I've ever heard of. That's just like, I, I mean, like imagine, imagine the equivalent is like, some guy says something that you don't like, so you spit on them, and then uh, all of your mates now know that that person is an idiot, um, and uh, that's just like it's it's very cruel. It's very cruel. Wasps are pure evil. Oh, here you go. As I think I've read something about this as well recently, Steve. Uh, it says, here's a fun fact, slash the, did you know that the lar large numbers of hauntings are very likely malfunctioning AC units or other machinery, and it's actually related, it's actually related to how your eyes work? I've heard Oh this. my god. <laughs> Aldrin, your comment has been flagged up <laughs> for review as well, <laughs> because it says, uh, see, this is why wasps do not deserve life. <laughs> Oh my, god. oh my god ecosystem my backside yeah yeah no. <laughs> i was just trying to think like what like things don't need to contribute to exist right I, i'm a firm believer in that they should everything should have the right to exist right Except wasps what? are maybe the exception though because like what animal eats wasps i really hope something is having a really great time eating i hope they are like the tastiest food in existence for some creature to justify the level of evil that uh, wasps exude. Like, mm, parasitic wasps as well. It's like the two most disturbing words yeah, next to each other. Right, yeah. My absolute ni nightmare uh, is the sentence ocular myiasis um, because myiasis is the scientific term for uh, something laying an egg um, and eyes oh my are my greatest God, fear. Gosh. So it's like when bugs, uh, in particular flies, uh, lay eggs in someone's eyes. Um, uh, so Ace is getting ever. back to us about working in a haunted house. Yes, let's change the subject. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, we also had a weird occurrence where we thought we heard cries from a person stuck in a room, but when we checked, the room was always empty. Mm -hmm. Nightmares. <laughs> no, thank you. 
uh, stays as your eyes constantly vibrate at around uh, 90 hertz. Uh, because if they didn't, the <laughs> vitreous jelly inside your eye would begin to set. Uh, oh, no way, really? I always find that, you know, when you sit on a train and you see someone looking out the window and you can see their eyes flicking like mad because they're like uh, watching yeah. things like that. It makes me feel a bit nauseous. So, uh, yeah, wasps are awful. <laughs> um, aces, but once we've torn down the attraction, uh, the cries are still heard in the warehouse no, to this day. No, thank you. Yeah. Um, and no one knows why I have not been back to that warehouse once. Yeah, so, maybe, I wonder. I wonder. Um, Steve continues. So, if a piece of machinery is vibrating at the same frequency, you can experience grayish, blobby shadows at the edge of your vision. Yeah. I also have a thing called hypnagogic hallucinations, which mm -hmm. is a hallucination between, in the moments between sleep and wake, so at both ends of that, where you can get up, move about, and you can see things because they're still part of you, kind of asleep or something. And it, I, if that is not also a reason for people believing they're ghosts, because quite often there's people standing in my room. Like I got up and slapped the wall the other day because I could, I, I woke up. And I was looking at this person sitting in the room and they just weren't fading away because they last quite long sometimes. So I definitely think that's got to play into ghosts. If anyone else has had that, you'll so, understand. So like, also to put this in context, I have really bad insomnia. Like I cannot sleep. I find it so hard to sleep. I can be asleep for days. I can be away for days, right? Mm -hmm. And when Yvonne and I had been dating for, you know, I, I want to say like a few months, right? We went to go and see a horror film together. Um, Mama, which still totally haunts me, um, and um, we were cuddling up, and Yvonne had gone to sleep quite quickly, and she goes, oh, there's someone crawling into the bed, um, and nothing will keep you awake longer than the phrase, someone, and crawling into mm. bed after seeing a horror film, um, so that was just... Uh, yeah. I've yeah. also been known to say, who's that under the bed? Why yeah. is there a man's face in the ceiling? Yeah. Things like that. It's all good. That kind of stuff. It's great. Um, um, Faces. Um, I live above a funeral parlor. Super cool. One night I thought I saw something moving on the stair, convinced myself it was nothing, and looked away, looked back, and there was a face staring at me. But it was just my brother sneaking around. But yeah, I was still, I've had like a series of many heart attacks. Yeah, that. no, that's, that's, um, I mean, I'm assuming that your brother was like then next in the funeral parlor because you killed them after scaring the absolute hell out of you. Uh, I think we've got a new commenter, Captain Ooh. Dutchman. I, I don't know if I've just lost the context of what you've said there. Um, Cost you zero money to say that. Um, that might be reference and something that I've kind of. Oh, yeah. Uh, Steve also has. Uh, both the posh solidarity and the insomniac solidarity. Ah, right. <laughs> welcome, Steve. Uh, welcome to our plight. Yes. Uh, oh yeah, Steve. Um, absolutely, thing. Hypnagogic hallucinations. Your senses mm -hmm. register something that isn't there, but it's very real for you. Yes. Yeah. I, I sort of mentioned that these were the origin of uh, the shadows that we now can fight in D and D. Actually, in that video. Um, the hypnagogic hallucinations and sleep paralysis, which is related but not quite the same thing, um, are the origins potentially of those things, and also alien abductions and things of that nature. Oh, I could get that, yeah. Because your eyes can't quite focus on, like, nothing, basically. Oh, Kevin got out of work early due to temp and heading home. Now I just checked the temperature at home and it's 100 plus Ooh, Fahrenheit. My What's that going to be? 30 oh, something? Plus? Yeah, hang on. Yikes. I always like to say, right, when we were on our um, honeymoon, we went to New Orleans. Uh, to that's, start oh my god, that's 37 degrees. 37? So, yeah. What was it? Was it like 34 or something? When Where we do you live? The sun? Like, why is that? 37? <laughs> God. That's not a human living temperature. I'm My goodness. That. What is that? That's 
What I was going to say is, in New Orleans, we had someone use my now favorite phrase for when something's too hot. He said that it's disrespectful heat, which is definitely what that is. That's more than disrespectful. That's oh, an hour. Aldrin's have, have been to leave. Thank right. you so much for joining in, Aldrin. Thank you so much. It's been lovely <coughs> to chat with you. I meant to skedaddle. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Bless you. Oh, the Garrix is back. She could also fire beams for it from her antenna. Oh, that's just cool like idea. Monster. That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Maybe a bit rust monster like. Myrtle's having a bit of a fuss. I don't know if you can hear that. She's just playing with her bed right now. Mercy. This wants to be the centre of attention right now. Weird that they can lie in their bed for hours and then all of a sudden it's like there's something about it makes them want to dig in it and throw yeah. it about it a bit before they would just lie back down for the next four hours. This is cheeky. <sighs> Steve says if you want to spoofify someone, dress all in black, wear a white mask on the top of your head, and crawl around on all fours, I've horrified a few mates with that. Oh They're my no God. longer mates. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe Halloween. If we can see people for Halloween, that's maybe what I'll do. <laughs> um, okay, right. I think... Am I done? Oh, oh, yeah, the wings. You know how we were all trying not to have too grim a drawing, but we get into grim topics of conversation. Yeah, yeah. it's getting one or the other. It's got to go away. <laughs> uh, yeah. Gamma uh, says, Junji... Uh, uh, it had a cat with a skull on its back that would scare him at night. Yeah. Ooh, um, yeah, if you had a black cat with like a white skull on it. Like, yeah, that definitely. Cool. That would creep you out. Uh, do you have any favourite UFO encounters? Um, well, I mean, not personally. <laughs> uh, thankfully. Um, do I have any favourite UFO encounters? I like stories of the men in black, like the actual men mm. in black. Uh, quite cool. I'm surprised none of my extended family have UFO encounters stories because yeah. that seems likely. Uh, yeah, I don't know actually. Um, yes, it's the kind of thing that I listen to all the time. I, I listen to all these stories of like creepy happenings and uh, and kind of ghost stories and legends and stuff like that, especially when I'm painting. Um, and yet at the same time, like right now, now that I've been asked, I can't think of a single thing. Um, What about you? I mean, do you do you have one that you uh, that you'd like to talk about and save me from not being able to think of a single thing right now? Um, what's going on in my brain? Why can't I, why can't I not think of that? By the way, this might be one of my favourite drawings in general. Like, this is a very cool creature. Um, oh, there you go. Some more good fun here from Steve. The Rendlesham incident. Ooh. I feel like this, I'm going to Google this. It's going to be something really dark yeah. here. Oh no, no, it's UFOs. Okay, okay, that's good. <laughs> yeah, incident, Usually when something yeah. has incident after it, yeah. it's like something deeply scary. Yeah. And uh, the Rendlesham Forest incident was a series of reported sightings of unexplained lights near the Rendlesham Forest in Suffolk Ooh, in, the late, in late December 1980. Mm -hmm. which became linked to claims of UFO landings. Interesting. Mm. You don't hear too many um, in the UK, really. I think they've had crop mm -hmm. circles and stuff, but they don't tend to have as many UFO sightings. Yeah. Or they're not as famous. Or well, the Phoenix Light as well. Mm -hmm. Check this one out. Oh, yeah, that's pretty. Kind of like sort of V shaped light forms that show up. Interesting. Hmm. Interesting. The Flatwood Monster. Well, that um, do you know that one? I, I, I feel like I just heard about that, but I can't remember off the top of my head what that is. Um, oh, uh, it's another suggestion for October. Uh, monster. Oh my god, the, the, 
The drawing on the, um, the Wikipedia page is interesting. I feel like maybe you could rework that because it looks like a cross between a Dalek and a maple leaf or something. I did. I watched a video about this <laughs> like two days ago. Yes. Oh my god. Yeah, this is a really weird one. I, I like that a lot. The kind of uh, alien that no one totally believes. I mean, it? at least it looks different to like the usual aliens. Yeah, you see, for sure. Which always have a kind of very similar look. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, Nicole is saying, let's ask questions in order to figure out the lore for this creature. Yes, so back, that's a back good. On topic. Yeah, that's a good call. Um, let's, let's go for it. Yeah, guys, what do you think? Uh, sort of background for this. So we we said her name was Carolina. Yeah. And um, um, we had a name for the species, which is yeah. the Latin name. So yeah. someone can remind me what that was. It's looking really cool. Thank you very much. I like it. Um. Again, I'm just like blown away just how quick. Yeah. You've done that there. I had one person who got very annoyed um, at the um, the mermaid one, saying it was like, this is the worst drawing I've ever seen on the channel. Um, and I was like, what do you expect for a drawing that I've done in like an hour? <laughs> like Usually my Monster Mondays take me like four to eight hours. So it's like, and even then that's like short. Right. Um but then this is actually turning out to be one of my favourites. <laughs> I mean, if, if the drawings that you do live while also talking yeah. <laughs> at random suggestions is not your week of work, I'd be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> but I also like personally don't see that big a difference in the quality yeah. of the work. Like, I I'm think pretty pleased with it. It's pretty good. Anyway, um, uh, check out Bedroom Stories on YouTube if you're both into cryptids. Yes, yes. We'll do that. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, cryptids are at the same time. That's awesome. Excellent. Right. Is it weak to cold iron, when Ring says? Yes. Who would be your mother, father, rivals, enemies, and allies? Let's throw that out there. Excellent call. Let's definitely do that. So, <laughs> Tiberius says, what have we done when I left? This was a night. Yeah. I mean, this got some armor on it. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's um, a guiding night. Yes, it's it's a uh, it's a moon night. Um, it's if you heard the story of the bloody count, uh, Countess Elizabeth Bathory, yeah, is that the one that would um, impale people on spikes out of their house? No, or am I thinking mm. of the different one? Or are you thinking of the one a woman who bathed in blood? Oh, that's who I'm thinking of. Um, Elizabeth Bathory. Okay. Yeah, no, this is it. Hungarian yeah. noble woman. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the original like Most ideas behind yeah. vampires, actually. Um, mm. Yeah, she's cool terrifying. Like, I listen to a lot of dark stuff, but the one podcast I listen to on her is oh, it made, it made me quite nauseous. Yeah. Oh yeah, um, Tinny or Tinny for the creature name. Ah yes. T i n a e. Yes. Tine? 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 That. You know what we're going for. A Moon Knight. Um, yeah. Yeah, if it wasn't copywritten by Marvel, I would totally be calling this a Moon Knight. Oh, um, is that copywritten? Yeah, there's a, they've made a kind of Batman parody um, oh, yeah? of this guy called Moon Knight, um, who is, yeah, it's like okay. Batman, but also, like, worships this. Uh, Basically a warlock for this Egyptian god of murder at the same time. So, not Batman. <laughs> um, okay. I'm really liking this. I'm going to definitely put some sort of like iridescent colours in. Um, and I think the, the kind of rhubarb and custard colours seem like a really good call for this. Mm -hmm. I have to get up that particular moth when we're coming up with the colour palette. Um. Um, Steve says they bricked her up in the room because they couldn't execute her being royalty. That's Ooh, very nice. that's very nice. Becky says she was the main villain in a campaign I ran. Oh, really? No way. Yeah, that's a really theory. cool goal. Nicholas says I don't think she's real, though. So. Right. Fair. Uh, 
Right, Becca says, whatever this is, it's beautiful and I desperately don't want to unleash it on my players. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to writing up the stats for this one as well. I might have an indulgent day tomorrow and do a bit of a bit of that. Really? I could see Rachel from our D&D group playing this character. I can too, actually. I definitely want to put like the kind of blade dancer style um, elegant combat in here. Maybe make it like, instead of strength, use dex as its main sort of attack by you know, like just extra flavour for DMs. It's not really actually going to apply much to its uh, um, statue, really. Uh, Nikolai Nicola says, um, Mark Spectre is his own character and he's awesome. Yes, he is uh, very, very cool. Yorick says, i so sorry for being that guy, but Min Knight draws his abilities and gadgets from the Egyptian moon god Khonshu. Yes, yes. He's a, a warlock of Khonshu, essentially, in like D&D shorthand. Um, uh, Tigeria says, can't wait for another day where I wake up and, and Josh has done another Slavic creature. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Fever Majeeper says, I still like the idea of mar the martial possibilities. When you look into a puddle, you, you see what could have been. Yes. I don't know how well that will work with this character now, but it's a thought. I really like that idea. I definitely think that's doable. I don't know quite how, but we will. I I, I like it too. Um, this is like the first one where I don't know if um, they've updated their um, like message held for review list. We've got another one here. It says Midnight is the guy from the meme that goes random bullshit. Go. I suppose. Oh uh, yeah, swear yeah, yeah. It's very sensitive filter. Yeah. Also, <laughs> you've just sworn on my stream. That's, oh no! That's my that's my revenue guy. Oh no! <laughs> Will it pick up with my accent? <laughs> well, maybe it won't. Actually, maybe I'll still maybe I'll still get through. <laughs> Usually, it's me. Damn. Usually, it's me. Like accident. Is that the first time I've sworn in a live stream? I think it's that's quite good going to me. Yeah, you've done very well. Bravo. We're always yeah. Always Tenny, the Tenny is the last name for uh, Latin name for moth. Is a good mix of that mm. and Faye because it's spelled out with it. Um, uh, Steve's saying maybe she has the ability with her dust that has that effect. Where, where am I seeing? Oh, yeah, the, oh, that could be the effect from the, the martial possibilities thing. Oh, could be yeah, I like that. Um, uh, uh, Cabman's asking what size. I think we covered that, but what? Yeah, did we medium. Say? I think something like seven feet uh, seems like a good height for this creature. Well, don't worry about this this way. In my chairs, it was me that said it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> just because I was confused. Yeah. I was like, why is that speed filter? It's yeah. not aggressive. And yeah. then I was like, oh yeah. yeah. Just some people there, I guess that is kind of swear. <laughs> yeah. In Scotland, the sea bomb doesn't actually really yeah. mean anything offensive friend. either, so it's just person, yeah, really. Yeah. In some places, yeah. in other places, you not always. Know. It's I know it carries a very, very different connotation in well, same technical meaning. Oh yeah, you're, um, you're saying, um Do any of your party members swear? Is there no swearing policy? Oh no, I would not be allowed in the game yeah. if there was a no swearing policy. I plenty think. of swearing outside of youtube but in order to make this like child friendly or child accessible i suppose um i i choose not to swear um on my videos um and that's yeah. about so you do have worry. there's some people whose kids who watch their, these videos with yeah you. like Bron not these videos. Hola, for example watches these with her kids in australia um there's uh, a couple of people as well who like I mean if you remember the Albert Holder video like that was uh, a guy who sent in his son's um, yeah, illustration I and did. character concept like that kind of thing I did try to see Microphocephalosaurus <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> uh, yeah. there's an attempt me is still catching me out here. I if think. we take homebrew and consider it, he could be a pugilist. Pugilist, yeah, I like I like the idea of uh, punching going on. Puge. 
um, Paper Mighty versus that would be a cool idea where you get hit by the dust that shows you flashes or of a better or worse leg. Which would be great in battle if you could confuse your foe by just making them think, oh. <laughs> Life could have turned out so different. Me. Yeah, exactly. The warlock is just sitting there cringing in a corner. It's like, I had so much potential. Get rid of those. The angry bits. Um, and. So, Nicola is saying the pugilist is a class made by Benjamin Hoffman. It's strength, it's strength's answer to monk. Yes, I, I've often thought of doing one of those, um, and I really like the concept. I've not seen like that particular homebrew, but I like the sound of it. Um, so, no. Her punches would do slashing and piercing damage on top of bludgeoning. Yeah, it's definitely. Yeah. Oh, Minring's got to go. Oh, sorry, Thank Minring. you for joining Thank us. Thank you for being here. Cheers. Um, uh, Steve says, basically a hypnotic pattern with a heavy flavour to it, maybe a twist of some kind. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah, that, that would be that cool. That's really cool. It'd be cool if the, the wings were sort of changing in a sort of hypnotic sort of octopusy way. Oh, you know, like, yeah, definitely. Definitely, I like that a lot. Hundred percent add that in. Lots of distraction, fighting a little bit dirty, I think, uh, with the kind of hypnotic attacks and so on. Um, okay. So colours wise, I made a little colour palette earlier on for a drawing that I was doing. Uh, it's another Monster Monday that's going to be coming up fairly soon. Uh, that has. Um, well, I took the colour palette from a Kingfisher. Um, but I'm going to just alter that now so we can get a kind of uh, uh, sort of pinks and yellows maybe so we can get some kind of yeah, some pinks and greens if I <coughs> so if I do it's quite pink that thing isn't it let's do that and then I'll change yeah, yeah to here yeah, yeah. Um, change the green here. Oh, um, Paper My Keeper has sent you their homebrew on Instagram, so you can check that out. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, where am I with the comments here? Uh, sounds like some of the abilities of the Sum Novum from Critical Role campaign two no spoilers but causing effects like slow because it fills you with grief forces you to move closer Very out cool. of joy etc that is interesting cool. yeah. i like that idea um, like the emotional moth man <laughs> emotional moth man <laughs> emotional yes. moth lady yeah right let's go for all i just got two texts from my 87 year old Granddad who uh -huh. did not know I could text. That's oh, impressive. Sorry. Um, what was the name of this um, kind of rhubarb and custard moth? Uh, so of... there was the rosy maple moth. Rosy maple moth. Let's Google that bad boy. Adorable. Rosy. You know what? It came up straight away. My phone's totally listening <laughs> to me. Oh my god, it's so cute. I love it. Right. Okay, and it's got very distinct sort of like patterns on it. I like this a lot. I can definitely work this in. So it's got quite a pale pink, actually. Um, and then, oh yeah, that's, that's jazzy. Um, I think we're gonna have to pastelize this a little bit when we go through the next stage, but we'll, we can come to that when we come to it. Um, the fur is quite yellow, the arms are quite pink, and then there's this kind of pattern here throughout the wings, which I think I'll just include over here. Um, and then are the antenna also like that? Yes, they are. Then the floss. Did you eat that? Yeah, go for it. Would you mind um, grabbing a drink? I'm really thirsty. Yeah, what do you like? Either some water or a coke or something would be nice. Um. 
Oh, goodness, I did not plan ahead for this stream um, in terms of bringing beverages. <laughs> um, I'm liking these ideas, guys. You've come up with some really cool stuff. I'm very much looking forward to making a little like pride moth uh, as well. Um, I was talking to Aldrin earlier um, and he was mentioning that he's an artist as well. I've seen a few of his drawings as well. I'd be curious to see uh, if any of you guys are also artists and uh, draw sort of like your D&D characters and your friends' characters and all this kind of stuff. Um, and in particular, there was talk of, at the moment there's a controversy going on in the D&D community. I mean, there is plenty of controversies going on in the D&D community, um, some of which are more worth talking about than others. But um, one of them that seemed somewhat light-hearted, perhaps, I don't know, I don't know enough about it, is um, the um, issue going on, apparently, with OCs, original characters, and then being used by other people in their campaigns, at least the artworks for them. And... Um, I was asked if... Oh, thank you very you much. Cheers for that. Just water. Yes, lovely. Um, I was asked how I would feel about my OCs being used, or at least their art, not necessarily their, their kind of uh, personalities or whatever, being used um, in somebody's game. And I, I feel like that would be fine, but then I don't have any OCs. I just have, like, you know, whatever I draw here. Um... And I understand in the OC community that these characters are kind of more uh, protected, more kind of, you know, there's more ownership over the personality of those characters. So personally, I would be fine as long as someone, you know, as, as long as no one's making a profit off of my artwork uh, for them to use my drawings in their games. But how do you guys feel about that? What's um, What are your thoughts on the use of OCs in... Uh, in, or at least OC artwork being used in uh, other people's campaigns. As long as it's not for profit, I, I, yeah, I don't see any particular issues there. But you know, I, I, like I say, I'm not a part of the OC community, so I don't really know. Um, maybe there's more to it that I'm unaware of. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Um, Cadman says I draw some of my div divinant, deviant art is oh, Pan Verminia. Uh, I've just, I've just had a wee nosy act actually myself. Very it's pretty cool. cool. I really look like the tall umber. I've never seen anything like that. Oh, I'll we'll have to have a look after this. Uh, um, and uh, York says, so far I'm just uh, sketching whatever random character I like. Sounds cool. Sounds like a good way to, to go start, for it. Yeah. Uh, Nicola says maybe she's enemies with the demon kind uh, because of their want to destroy and corrupt everything but uh, Zygotme yeah, yeah, uh, Baphomet and Jubilex are her true enemies because of their want to corrupt fungal life uh, uh, cool. very cool uh, Steve says yeah I saw that controversy it's a naughty one depends on the intention to make stacks not cool to add depth and flavour to a story or game rock and yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cameron says OC controversies happen frequently in various creative communities. Some communities are more protective of than others, even some individuals. I feel like it's residual backlash from stuff like Servals. I'm not sure I'm not, yeah. I'm not familiar with that one. Yeah. Um well me and my partner are not the richest people on the planet but we can always commission art. So we're kind of guilty of using pre-existing art for characters. Yeah, I, d I, don't, I, don't I wouldn't see an issue true. with that personally. But then again, like I say, I'm not I'm not part of that community. It's just within your own group, and you're not like yeah. if you're not like I don't know framing it instead of like like a print out rather than paying for the art. Yeah. Like, but if you're just if it's just like a little print out on your um, character sheet, I think that. That seems fine with me, but there could be well yeah. off there. But. 
It's always stuff that we don't know. Um, uh, he says, I feel like I missed something. What's up with thumbs up controversy? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, basically, there's a there's controversy going on in the uh, original character world right now that um, Aldrin let me into. Um, it sounds like he's like, introduced me to it. Uh, but no, like, he, he told me about it. Mm. Um, and uh, the idea is that people are um, annoyed right now because, and I don't know who in specific has caused this issue or what mm. the nature of this issue is, um, but he was saying that um, basically some people have uh, raised the issue of like whether or not it's okay to uh, use someone's original character's art, but not personality, but just the art, um, in your D and D game. Mm. Um, and I would. I would do. Yeah, they I mean, know. if it's like Critical Role and they're like using well, someone's yeah. art, yeah, yeah, fair, fair it, I feel yeah. like that's the definite. If thing, you're making money but... off it, definitely need to consider the, mm. the you know, uh, the uh, side effects there. Uh, do we need a name for her title? What is she? She has a role. We know her name and her race, but what is her role? Is that important? That's very true. Yeah, very, very good call, actually. Um, what can she do? You know, what what should her title be? Is she? Um, I, I, I don't know. Really, it's the sort of guiding guiding knight, and yeah. there was a few suggestions around sort of. That kind of idea of the of guiding light, guiding. Like, yes, yeah. Um, um, the night like night. Midnight. <laughs> yes, the night night. Um, the night night. Oh, the, uh, the night night screen. <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, uh, guys, what do you think? What, um, what's her title? What's her role? I'm liking this color palette a lot. It's a shame Aldrin's gone, just as we were getting into yeah, the pink and yellow. Colors, yeah. I'm sure they'll check it out. The Knight of the Lunal Court, that's uh, the yeah, that is, that is Or the cool. Warden. Ooh. Uh, Guardian of the Forces. That's the cool. I got like the Transformers th- soundtrack in my head there. Hearing that, it's like. Dun, 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 dun. Oh no, actually, it's not. not maybe that's my. Uh, Sarah so now using copyrighted music for my de- <laughs> demonic oh, practice. Oh my goodness, oh no. Yeah, no. It's also. Oh I yeah, think, are people are ready for sooner. Are we still going with the martial possibility sort of thing? How are we going to fit that in? Yes, that's yeah. a very good question. I want to kind of hear your thoughts on that, actually, because add or more, but I like the idea of it. Um, definitely needs to be incorporated somewhere yes, there. Yes, yeah, it's a cool idea. I quite like it being the dust things. We felt we needed to incorporate the dust somehow. So yeah. like you're getting smacked in with a face full of dust that shows you how <laughs> great or how awful your life could be. Yeah, definitely. But I, I think that ties Seeker into the time the dust as well. It sounds really cool. Seeker uh, of the flame. Seeker of the flame sounds Night very of cool. darkness or night of shadow. Yes. So I Yo. like Seeker of the flame. Yes. That almost that has that sort of paladin thing to it. it almost yeah. feels like a kind of like on a quest, on a kind of religious. Yes. Sort of seeking a deeper understanding. Definitely. Seeker of the flame. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that sounds cool. like a. Yeah. That's like I'm so badass. Thank you very much. I'm enjoying it a lot. Um, yeah, thanks for sticking with us, guys. This is like a long one, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be worth it. Yeah, I hope so. Um, yeah, I don't know. I could, there's still time to screw up. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's gonna be good. Um. <laughs> I've got the seeker of the flame in my head stuck like to the sound of leader of the pack. <laughs> <laughs> that's not that's not bad. Um, I'm liking um, yeah. yeah, so and Nicola I was asking a few times earlier in the chat about um other people in relation to this. So um what about uh, what who are enemies sort of thing? Yeah, so that's a really good we're question. sort of saying like she could have the enemies of people that are like into sort of chaos and destruction. 
Is there anything um, else around that we want to ask? If people who would harm her, like, moth spring, I guess, uh, was one of the things that someone was saying, I believe. Um, but I can't remember exactly what they said. Let's go. We'll catch all these bits when we go yeah. back over the chat. Oh, yeah, for sure, definitely. I'm going to be sifting through quite narcissistically watching myself and uh, <laughs> and this stream just to listen out for your comments so that I can go back and incorporate a lot of this stuff into the finished piece um, and I'll make sure to um, put it up on my Instagram and uh, on the YouTube sort of community section as well of uh, my site here page thing that words you know what I'm talking about um, and uh, so you guys can all get the stats when I'm done with it as well. Um, Peeper My Jeeper says, Exarch of, of what once was. Ooh. Seems a bit too on the nose for the martial possibilities motif, but it's a starter idea. So very cool. Also, I love the word Exarch. That's one of my yeah. all-time all -time favourite kind of... That and just a car is a good paladin <laughs> phrase, you know. Uh, uh, the night in the darkness, uh, gallo dust from Ooh, Sue. Ooh, gallo dust. That yeah. Is the yeah. yeah, that's pretty cool. That's really nice. Oh man. Three eyes because they have very very clearly black eyes. Rainbow blade is a hundred percent going to be a thing, but that might come later on. That might be the final thing that I do. Yeah, I feel like that'd be a nice note to end on. Yeah. A rainbow. Yeah, exactly. And close that one. Oh, what if we had a multiple coloured moths like a Knights of the Round? Oh, that's, that's a really cool idea. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That was easy. Uh, that's, that was yeah, it was ace. It was ace. And I think things are with shiny gem things at the back as well, a bit like the eyes. I can hear my little whistle snoring away. Yep. It's um, a very cozy little dog. Um, right, okay. I think um, I need some of this armor to change a little bit, actually. And Steve says uh, that's the play on the old anglicised gallo glass of the Irish, which I have never heard either. So mm. that's another Google thing. Can you see? <laughs> <laughs> gallo glass. Oh, uh, a class of elite mercenary warriors who are principally members of the Norse Gaelic clans of Ireland between the mid. 13th century and the late 16th century. Congrats. Never heard of. That's totally made That it sounds in. really cool. Yeah. A gallo glass. What, what that sounds a brilliant very word. cool, yeah. Uh, right. uh, it's Exarch um, implies that they have someone above them, apparently. Okay. By the way, when it comes to tritons in your world, do you go with the Volos guys of to monsters, or do you look? Sorry, or do you go with something more along the lines of the creature from the Black Lagoon? I do neither. Um, I so tritons don't technically exist in my game. I have a species called the Naiad instead that use the same stats, but are otherwise. Um, what would I call them? Um, they look very similar to, I guess, um, the... Uh, I'm struggling to remember the name. There's this kind of like blue creatures that were in a Magic the Gathering uh, inspired supplement. 
which I can't remember. But again, they're one of those things that, again, like I had the idea for this long before I realized that that was a thing in Magic the Gathering. But um, they kind of have the kind of Voldemort nose, they have gills, um, they don't have hair, but they have tentacles instead. Um, and they are um, uh, sort of inspired by sort of ancient Egyptian uh, mythology, really. Uh, so they have these kind of like underground pyramids and all this kind of stuff, and they worship old gods. They worship my kind of uh, Cthulhu-esque deities um, that were split apart at the beginning of time. Um, and they have, you know, pharaohs and pharaohs and all this kind of stuff. Uh, so I do not use uh, tritons in my game, but I use something that is altogether feels a little bit more my own um, uh, because I didn't realise that uh, the tritons were actually in D and D when I made them. Uh, so <laughs> mm -hmm. But I like them. I like them anyway. Yeah. How about you? Are you a big Triton fan? Was that Yorick? Because I think. Yorick, yeah, yeah. I feel. Like... Also, I followed that the or the shape of water for something more modern and hip. No, I yeah, like I say, uh, definitely don't go too monstrous with them. Yeah. Um, and the shape of water. I mean, I don't know what I was expecting from that song, but yeah. that wasn't. Yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I was expecting a very different film. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Good creature design. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, certainly had Guillermo del Toro written all over it. Um, <sighs> getting in here with some of the ornamental bits. work on some of these wings and things at some point as well. Oh, okay. Um, have seen Fedalkin? Fedalkin, yes, that's it. Yes. That's what a look. Yes, that's mm -hmm. sort of uh, what they look like. I'll, um, hmm. I'll draw some at some point. Certainly, uh, my patrons are getting kind of like the lore of my homebrew world and like the creatures that live in it at the moment. That's kind of starting up. Um, now they get like a video every month, um, and I'm going to be talking more about the kind of player races that are in my game or player species, whatever word you want to use. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll be talking about the Naiad at some point. Probably going through it alphabetically, to be honest, because that's otherwise I'll forget about all of them. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to covering that actually because they have a really fun bit of lore. Uh, and I'm looking forward to, I don't know, I, I would quite happily do a campaign purely underwater in their kind of kingdom. Um, I don't know, I don't know if anyone's done much of that kind of stuff. I think we talked about that a little bit in the last live stream about doing a, um, an underwater campaign, a full underwater campaign. Um, which I, I've never played in, uh, but I like the idea of. Mm. Oh, yeah, I think this movie come, came up before Ace is Colourblind, so I'm sure the, the pink looks great if I could see it. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> we'll do, um, we'll do a, uh... I'm curious, have you, have you ever tried those glasses that correct colourblindness? I don't know if they work for everyone, but I've seen some videos of people trying them and it's just like... Yeah, I think there's different flavors. It's really yeah. mess with your mind to suddenly start seeing yeah. a whole range of colors that you couldn't see before. Uh, Kaufman says maybe a bit of Abe Sapien from Hellboy. Oh yes, good old Abe. I love Abe Sapien. Especially like in the comics as well. That artwork is absolutely stellar. Mike McNova, absolutely brilliant comic book artist. Um, really simple, but really like gets to the bare bones of everything he needs to absolutely mm. that's not the guy who can't draw feet uh no there's plenty of them that can't i think <laughs> mate are you thinking of uh, rob liefeld oh, okay. maybe i get uh, yeah i get a lot of the artists confused yeah. Mm. Yeah, rob liefeld can't draw anything 
<laughs> oh, 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 fighting talk. No, no. Uh, if he, I think if you Google the words Rob Liefeld, the first thing that come up, comes up is Liefeld. Li- yeah, Liefeld, Liefeld. Uh, it's like, why is Rob Liefeld so awful? He designed Deadpool, but um, uh, not the personality of Deadpool. He just he had one lucky uh, character design and is famous for being generally awful. He and a comic book writer called Jeff Loeb are, uh, in my opinion, two people who have done the most detrimental damage to comic books. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Nicolae is in, um, so, as she also hates devil kind because of their totalitarian tendencies, mm. um, and she does uh, work with Yugos. Yugos? Oh yeah, uh, you go lots and so on and so uh, forth. To help them out in yeah. their attempt to overthrow, uh, but she she double double deals them and Excellent. gives vitals info. Very cool idea. I like that. Um. Oh, and gives vital info about them and the blood war to the celestial Eldrin. Oh, excellent. Oh yeah, people are guessing that it's Rob Liefeld when I said that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's the one. There's a very Rob fam- Liefeld is bad and should feel bad. <laughs> 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 yeah. He's also, uh, like, bearing in mind it's Pride Month, right? Mm. He's just uh, jumped back onto X-Force and has tried to uh, canonly unbisexual a character. Um, so he's why he, what difference does that make to their story I have no idea I don't know why anyone would mm. care enough to do that to a character but like it's... Uh, York, we'll, we'll give some balance here Yark says to be fair to Joseph uh, well, Jeff Lowe Jeff Lowe sorry uh, Batman Hush and Superman for all seasons were really good I, I really like Batman Hush. I'll, get, I'll totally give you that. That was That's really it. good. Rob isn't that bad, but he is full of himself. He is very distinctive. He's full of himself? What? Rob Leafield is full of himself? Yeah. Oh, my God. Why are you saying... Just, what do they have to be full of? Oh, all right. Let's not get into <laughs> this slather. <laughs> Everything he does is vascular. That's a good word for it. I just Googled yeah. it, and I was like, yeah, what's going on here? Yeah. yeah. 90s muscled edge boy. I'm sure yeah. it was cool at the time. Totally. I remember picking up cable comics and like X Force comics and stuff when I was growing up that he he drew and I really enjoyed them. But uh, it, and I certainly you know I grew up anatomy and stuff like that all the time. Um, so I mean he's better than me, obviously. But like I still don't. Think it's not to your taste. Yeah, he's not to my taste. Um, at all. Cavman said I would love to hire him to design a space faction for my setting. It'd be right up his alley. Super mm. muscular. <laughs> mm. um, I don't know. Oh no, I've still got the, on. Yeah, I've got the little mantis claw left to finish up here because I did a gradient right through it. But mm-hmm. otherwise, I think we can move nice. on to like the next sort of bit. Rainbow. I'm getting some rainbows on the go. <laughs> Big dumb muscle grows full of themselves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then that's yeah, that's kind of the aesthetic by the looks of it. Yeah, very yeah. true. Right. Um, let's do. Get some more pastels in here. It's vibrant but pastel. Um, and then I want to adjust that. Oh yeah, there we go. That's what we're going for. I think that's probably it. But I'll just play around with a few other things. 
Oh, yellow really does work with it. Uh, I think the yellow has it actually there. There we go. Um, okay, let me get some on here, multiply and reduce that. Ooh, that's not what I'm doing at all. Oh, Crafty's joined the chat. Welcome, uh, Crafty. Steve says, are we going to change that uh, to Rainbow Blades? Yeah, no, we're yes, going to that. It's still happening, for sure. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, 100%. I just want to do a couple of things first. Uh, here it says, and for better, uh, for worse, he did help revolutionise independent creator-owned comic books when he and the other artists uh, formed Image Comics. Good for him. That yeah, sounds, sounds good. Then. Yeah, it sounds like a good thing to do. Very worthy, I like that. <laughs> it's not like you to get riled by someone else's work. Sorry, there are, there are only two people who uh, irk me uh, then it's, it's an old irk from childhood really uh, and it's him and Jeff Loeb that's about it I'm going on fairly serious rants about that <laughs> but we'll leave it be it's probably from a tight like when you're a teenager you have to be so on, yeah, like you can't be on the fence about anything yeah, you have totally. to be you either have to love it or hate it exactly when you're a teenager so. exactly it's just a past past gripe rearing its ugly head, obviously. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, uh, let's get the rainbow. Uh, Nikolai, it says, uh, and the Yugos plan to do the same to her, but for now she's proven useful, so keep her around. I'm imagining they have a whole deal where if she helps them, they would leave centre parts of the... And I think it obviously cuts people off at a certain point oh. and a certain until like another comment. So right, okay. We'll get that in a wee second. Oh, Alden's back. Oh, Pink and yellow. Yes. yes. Alden, we took your suggestion on board with that. Yes. Because we're both kind of in love with the rhubarb and custard moth. Yes. I like. I haven't felt that way about an animal since I looked at an axle bottle for the first time. Oh. So. Uh, bearing in mind, you hate moths usually. Like you're usually quite nervous of moths. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're undoing the damage we've really did. Yeah. That and uh, Steve's moth garden, moon garden thing. Yeah, that's very cute. <laughs> Sorry, where did that continue from? Um, uh, Steve says he did basically draw Captain America as a cube of meat. <laughs> and uh, Gavin says we're both pecs and his spine is visible from a side shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. I feel bad. I feel like I, I feel kind of guilty about what I've said. Oh no! I, like, I tend... Yeah, everyone's entitled to their opinions, and you know, yeah. but I don't know. we usually try and keep it quite positive. Yeah, I tend to. Not usually. That was me. I shouldn't have mentioned the guy can't draw feet. Mm -hmm. No, it's it's not your fault. It's not your fault. <laughs> I, I I shouldn't get worked up about things like that. It's not. I know, you live a much better life when you stop caring so much about things you don't like, you know? It's like yeah. the moment you give up on disliking Justin Bieber music or something like that, you, your life becomes, like, far yeah. more... It's cool, we've got Garrick's balancing those yeah. out here, and uh, yeah. he says, I've also heard lots of great stuff about Spider-Man Blue and Daredevil Yellow, also written by Jeff Loeb. Well, there you go, there you go. I'm sure he's done some really good stuff. He says, don't he's bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna stay out of the conversation because I think I I have expressed too strong opinion about something that doesn't need to have a particularly strong opinion. You know, if it was civil rights, that's something to get worked up about. <laughs> Not Jeff Loeb. <laughs> you know, I need to pick my battles basically. Um, yeah, no, we're all joking and talking about. Yeah, yeah. Oh, just feel sorry that like Wafi was like oh I'll try a new stream oh <laughs> you know, I'll try this really obscure YouTube channel. yeah <laughs> I'm so sorry Jeff or oh, oh, Rob um I'm sure 
Oh, thank you very much. Uh, Zachary has just donated to Marital Snack Budget. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Marital will be very pleased with that. She will definitely, thank you. <laughs> Odin's in Myrtle's snoring very soothing. Yeah, it's not usually. Usually it's like a, a walrus gargling porridge, but um, <laughs> now it's it's very sweet. Right. And I wonder if I can... How are you getting on now? Real good, just doing the rainbow. So I'm just trying to find a screen that's maybe, ooh, that's pretty nice. Vivid. That's a bit too vivid, maybe. Yeah, it was quite nice when it was not direct as a pastel, just maybe a wee bit stronger. Yeah. You could maybe duplicate that layer and it's. Maybe not like that, actually. Yeah, that's a good call. Like uh, subtle, because it, it got a lot of strong colour going on. Yeah, exactly. But it needs to be strong uh, enough to see it. Oh, for Dantis has joined us. Uh, uh, it's in the creatures looking great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, maybe if I... <laughs> you could record your snoring and license it to Cam or another one of those apps. Honestly, oh. we need to get a recording of her really gone in for it. <laughs> um, oh, right. Uh, so Nikolai... So when you're looking back through the comments, you need to just like pick out Nikolai's comments and string them together because they've just got yes. the whole backstory going on here. So yeah, no continuing from the previous one, uh, they lied, of course, but most likely managed to trick her, and those and those and those who don't don't have enough evidence to prove that she's more detrimental than beneficial to her. Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, Becky says, okay, so walrus gargling porridge might be my new favourite phrase. <laughs> can we set up a GoFundMe for Myrtle snacks? <laughs> yes, you yeah, absolutely can. Uh, yes, quite okay. happily. She would very much Every that. single time my dad sees Myrtle, he's like, she's looking up with them, she's looking up with them. And then we go to the vet and the vet's like, she's overweight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can't help it, I love her so much. I just want to put snacks in her mouth. Be happy, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um, okay. Yeah, that is what Josh said. <laughs> What's that I'm saying? No, yeah, Aldrin saying what? <laughs> After that comment, yeah, you know, well, of course. Just, you've got some really good words and descriptions for Myrtle, but that's maybe one of my favourite ones of you. <laughs> what was saying? So. What was saying? Yeah, what was what gargling porridge? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> just gonna get some extra shadows going on here for it's looking really cool thank you very much i'm really liking this actually i think also you could do a lot of color variants and things like that mm -hmm. uh would be really nice i like the idea of having different colored ones um around the table mm. yeah definitely knights of the pentagonal ottoman um well, Knights of the Moon Garden. Oh, Knight of the Moon Garden. She's a Knight of the Moon Garden. Yes. Steve's Moon Garden. Steve, you've you've done it, man. You've uh, Moon Garden's in, dude. That's totally. You are good. You you're totally a girl, man. I don't think anyone was thinking that. Like, it's hard to read the comments sometimes in the right tone and whatever, but I honestly don't think that. You came across bad in any way. Oh, no, all. not at all. I'm so sorry if that's what it, uh, yeah, if that's the impression you got. Absolutely. Disagreements are 100% welcome. Um, and, like, this, like, being impassioned is 100% welcome. You didn't come across as, as anything other than uh, a happy It was a nice fan. balance. It was, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a nice, it was a pleasant conversation. And I'm so sorry if, if you if you got the impression that, that, we thought anything other than, than, than positive things from you. Um, no. I mean, um, Steve also points out, I knew we couldn't invent something that wasn't unspeakably horrific. It is beautiful, but yeah, you, 
we have it isn't the isn't wholly traditionally beautiful shall we say like it right. does look like a you know it could do some serious damage yes. and it's but yeah. you know what? Challenge <laughs> accepted, though. That maybe that's the quest with the next live stream. We're gonna make the most beautiful thing we can possibly make next time. Right. Okay, it's not even gonna be like it's not even gonna be a hint of disgusting about it. Um, or you know, we we can just make something that is purely beautiful. I don't even know how to do that, um, but we'll give it a go. I don't think we've totally. Uh, ditch the idea of marsh of possibilities I think we'll see how it goes when Josh is reading back through the comments and piecing things yeah, together and see what fits but yeah, it could I really either like be used idea. like that or it could be used as a dust or something like that but yeah. I think it will be used somehow if not that's definitely something to bookmark for another yeah. thing because it is a really cool concept generally when I go through and I kind of like make the stats for these things on D&D Beyond I'll go through and like just read through everyone's ideas and I'll try and put in as many of them as I can as long as it stays cohesive and I think there's there's definitely room for that to be a part of this creature um, so yeah. do not worry I'll make sure to she says she this is a very nice sentence she should be heralded by something subtly sweet yes I, I'm sorry a subtly sweet scent yeah I, I think there's a lot of alliteration in the comments tonight yeah. guys like Take it easy on me. Like <laughs> Something like jasmine, Ooh. like moonflowers, rich but not cloying. Oh, that's a good Oh, call. and uh, Nicole says her mum could be the queen of air and darkness, and the dad the previous king of the Unsealy 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 court. Yeah, I love it. Who was the most achieved and intelligent of her species? That's really cool. Yeah, excellent. Always good to catch it. Right, my current character is the most intelligent of our species. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. the species she's from might not be the most intelligent, uh, but she is officially the most intelligent one of the lot. Is she? <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Right, oh, I'm just going to put some little sparkling things. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think that might be ours after that. Yeah, Aldrin says uh, Steve is buzzing with ideas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you guys always come up with so many ideas. Like, there's all, there's too many good ones. Always, like, some have to be left out, and you're like, oh, that, that's so good. It should go be written down somewhere for like future campaigns. Yeah, definitely. And he said, I like the idea of the DM saying you smell a seat scent, followed <laughs> by this. Thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sweet to something. Uh, let's see if I've got anything in the concept. Becky says, "What a beauty." Thank you, Becky. Thank you very much. Have we got any kind of like bug brushes, uh, like moths or anything? I've got birds. I've got mm-hmm. little dots and things. I was going to say like maybe oh, do like little okay. moths or butterflies, kind of like as the dust that kind of like floating around. But it might just have to be little sparkly, specky things. Um, maybe there's a dust that comes from the wings. Maybe. If you yeah, that's the that's the specky. kind of that's the hope. Um, be quite nice you know we'll just do that um So if she's mothy, does that mean you can foil her with a bright light? Yeah, we were yeah. sort of considering how we can fit that in. There was like a few suggestions earlier about maybe she has advantage on people that are like kind of casting a bright light yeah. or on fire or something, or whether she's attracted to it. But definitely needs to go in there somehow. Yeah, hundred percent. Oh, this is good straight look at all those brushes. Yeah, man, your computer yeah. memory must be like wow. I was even given a few more recently. Um, Crafty, who I think is still in the comments, uh, sent me a few really useful brushes I'm looking forward to using. Um, but, yeah, my uh, basically every time I do a drawing, I 
put it immediately on my external hard drive because there is just no, no more room for any images on this computer because it's all brushes. Um, uh, I want to do one more thing. Is there time for me to do one more thing? No, no. You know what? It's good. I like it. We're going to start. I feel like... I bet it's Sesame Street we need to end on this of like what did we learn today and see yes. something try making a moon garden of your own guys mine is just a half whiskey barrel night insects are also important pollinators yes. like bees but rightly bees get all the press don't forget your moths guys <laughs> don't forget your moths uh, thank you so much for joining us guys I had a really lovely time tonight um, even though I went on a weird tangent about comic book artists um and uh this was a really lovely creation i look forward to going back through and reading all your comments and picking out the abilities and i will publish the sort of stats for this creature so that you can use it in your campaigns um and uh yeah thank you so much for your support and for those of you who donated there was a few donations um, so thank you very very much for that um and uh yeah i will look forward to seeing you actually my next video is on friday not on monday it's it's going to be the next t-shirt reveal um uh because there's going to be a free shipping weekend so uh if you want another t-shirt actually i'm wearing my dungeon master one right now there's going to be um one coming up for the druid um which is very cool so uh hopefully uh, i can see you guys on friday for that and um yeah, I'm now rambling because I can't think of what I'm supposed to be saying. But I hope you have a wonderful evening. It's been lovely chatting to you all. Thank you so much for being here. Bye.